During a routine patrol in Brookhaven, New York, things took an unforeseen twist when a police officer spotted a vehicle parked in the middle of an intersection. This vehicle was disrupting the traffic flow. As the officer approached the vehicle, it became evident that the driver's behavior was peculiar, showing signs that suggested possible impairment. Hey, yo, yo, yo. What's going on, man? What's going on? You all right? I'm fine. So, why is it, uh, you just sitting here in the middle of the, the middle of the intersection here? You don't know? What's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas? We, we live at Nicholas. You alright, Nicholas? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, where you coming from? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you coming from? Uh, coming from the square. From where? The cop suspected the person might be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, so he phoned for assistance to make sure that everyone involved was safe. How you doing, sir? Okay, how are you? Alright, you okay? Yeah, you sir. Gotcha. You got anything to drink tonight? No, sir. Nothing at all? No, sir. Nothing at all? No, sir. Okay. Twenty is that for you? Gotcha. You good. Any uh, weapons or narcotics in the vehicle? Oh, no, sir. No, whatsoever? No. Okay. No. Do, you, do you have a key fob for the vehicle? Is it a push to start? There you go. Whoa, whoa, push for put, put it in park. Put it in park. Put in park. There you go. I apologize. That's all right. You have your key fob? Uh, yes, sir. Let me see it, please. At this point, the cops informed the suspect of what was about to take place and also questioned him about the substances he had ingested that caused him to behave in such a manner. It's okay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to tow this car. You're going to get a ticket for being impaired. And then you're going to get checked out of the hospital. You understand, sir? Sir, I understand. What, what did you put in your body? Like, what's messed you up right now? Sir, I'm not on You're on something. I can see it in your eyes. I'm trying to figure out what it is, so we're trying, trying to get you some medical assistance because there's something in your body that I think might be messing you up. In the time that they were waiting for emergency medical services to arrive and evaluate the driver's health, emotions rose throughout the situation. Because of what he saw to be a waste of time, the suspect became more upset and communicated his dissatisfaction with the situation. My battery's dying. Uh -huh. You have wasted my time. Please find something that you can really charge me for. All right, go and step out the car for me. No, sir. I will not. Step out the car. No, sir. I will not, sir. Step sir. Out the, I'm going to ask you one more time. No, step I will out not. The car. Why not? Because it's my right as a human being to not. Okay, why can I not just sit here and look at a Stop sign. Come on, man. No. Sir, step no. out of the car. Sir, let me tell you how this is going to end. You're not going to get me out of the car. You're going to go away and let me enjoy the rest of my day. No, sir. Because the suspect refused to cooperate with the police, the cops were aware that the issue could not be addressed peacefully. As a result, they decided to take the appropriate action. With the help of their backup, they were able to take the driver out of the car and place him under arrest. Come on, 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 come I hand behind your back, other hand. Everything. Yes, sir. Then he tried to seem real tough and avoid getting into the police car. Nevertheless, after some time, he started to seek forgiveness. Have a seat. Sorry. Put your feet in. Put your feet in. Put your feet in. Put your feet in. Please, I'll just fix this. That's all. Put your feet in. Okay, I'll put my feet in, but please. I'll look at that later. 
Put your both feet in. You need to tuck it. I actually do. Put your feet in. I'm sorry. Sir, sir. Please, just, just, just once, just forgive me, please. You're forgiven. The driver was charged with driving under the influence of alcohol, along with several other offenses, including unlawful turn movements and obstruction of law enforcement personnel. While the intoxicated individual may have appeared confrontational to the police, the next person believed it might be clever to use profanity at a police officer. As it turns out, it wasn't a wise choice. The story kicks off with the arrest of an individual in the Florida Keys during a traffic stop on suspicion of driving under the influence of alcohol. But that's not the end of it. This arrest led to a profanity-laden outburst that included threats directed at the police officers. How you doing, man? Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good, good, good. Awesome. Can you do me a favor and just lean up against my car while I go uh, absolutely? Do you have any value to tell you? I have a lot of value. Other than that giant bag of marijuana, is there anything illegal? There is nothing illegal in that car. Oh, a giant bag of marijuana is illegal. There's nothing illegal in that car. Do you have a Florida medical marijuana car? I do. Did you buy that marijuana out of the dispensary? What marijuana are you talking about? The marijuana that you open your car and slam it shut because it's sitting right there? There is no marijuana in my car. Do you have your medical car with you? Maybe. Maybe not. There you go. Go search it. During the time that the cop was searching the suspect's vehicle, the suspect repeatedly insulted the cop and made some horrifying statements. He said he said I could do that. Your partner said I could do that. Okay. All right. Now, now, now let's be nice. Okay. Yeah. You gotta get get it out. Now, now we're gonna be nice, right, Walter? I'm gonna be nice. Let's be nice, okay? Go ahead, search everything you want, sir. You're a head. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> I got lots of hats. I'm a musician. <laughs> hey, I'm a musician. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to jail. That's your way of thinking about it. Well, whatever. I'll be out in 24 hours, and I'll make sure that you get Walter, do you want to take your phone with you, though? You know, he's... What do you say when you get out When I get out, the commander is going to your pension okay, and have a woman up and pants your house up and up, Moody, Rudy. At this point, the suspect threatened the cop, stating that he would terrifyingly harm his family. You got any kids? What? You got any kids? I don't really think that's a good business. I'm gonna in the ass. If I don't do it, I'm gonna have somebody else in the ass. I want you on the camera to know this. You know what? What I just said. Is that it? That's it. That's all you want me to know? Yeah. Okay. I say my piece. I'm not. A <laughs> I believe you, Walter. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a gentleman. Okay. What's that? Nothing. I'm not talking to you. I thought you were. I'm talking to John. Additionally, the suspect made a threat to the cops, stating he would murder them if he had a pistol, and informed them later that he had a sniper at home. Most likely, he mentioned this so he could demonstrate to them he's capable of killing them if he's freed from prison. You see, if I had a gun, you'd be all dead right now. Okay. Why? That's why I don't carry a gun. But I do have a sniper rifle. M60. Okay. This is not over. You bought the Bells. six Bud Lights. This is not over, sir. What's well, not over? This is what your life is over, but not this. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. And the, all that was in the car empty. 
During the time when the suspect was being transported to prison, the suspect told the cop he was planning to kill his sheriff since he was the one who had arrested him. Yeah, I just sit right over there and shoot him before he even gets into this place. Right in the head. Maybe what do you want to right here. You'll be sitting right here in your spot right John. You'll be dead. And you'll wait for the thing to open up. And guess what? Your sheriff will be dead. He'll be sitting right here. Dead. There you go. Like the sheriff of the whole county? No, just him, John. Oh, uh, the deputy that arrested you? Yes, sir. Okay. At the prison, the suspect told the cop he was capable of killing his sheriff from a distance of 2,000 yards and referred to a film that's comparable to his explanation. You see that deer hunter? The movie? The deer hunter. I'm not sure. 1978. Probably not. I don't think uh, so. He's from Pennsylvania. The little deer hunter. One shot, one kill. I don't need one shot. Uh, <laughs> From 2,000 yards, try to find me, brother. <laughs> try to find me. <laughs> I can be off the island before you, you even find out he's not here. Think about it, John. So, in the end, Walter Frank Camp is facing a wide range of charges, including driving under the influence of alcohol, grand theft of a motor vehicle, multiple counts of threatening a law enforcement officer or an officer's family, harassing a law enforcement canine, indecent exposure, and resisting arrest. Alicia was arrested on suspicion of shoplifting, but what she stole was quite unusual. Let's dive into the moment that the police arrived. You called? Yeah. Okay, she's in here? Yeah. What did what'd she take? She stole the... Uh, you want us. to sign a complaint against her? Yeah, okay. she's waiting. She don't, want, she don't want to give me the Uggs. The Uggs? Uggs sure, you have sir. video of it or no? You observed it. I have a video, but she's waiting, you know. Okay. All right, 21. The uh, females inside the Sparrow Wine and Liquor Store, uh, we also have the victim here on scene. Now the police had located Alicia and taken her out of the shop in order to conduct an investigation. Nevertheless, she was pretty irate for some reason. So, uh, we want to get out of here. Come on, Alicia. Thank you so much. That's so mean. Right, I have her. It's Alicia Noel. I have the simple dollars. You're good. Come on. Damn, yeah, bro. Oh, what if, why they don't want to serve outside. me? Go outside. Go outside. Does not go. Does she have a bag back there? Uh, no. No, I don't want to be. Where's the gold? Yeah, man. Where'd you get those? They gave it to me myself. Just around my feet. Come on, get off of me, please. You gotta Stop. relax. Stop. Oh, get off of me, please. No. no. It was at this point that the suspect approached the store owner as well as the police, and she handed over the shoes that she had stolen. So she took those off and put, okay, all right. Oh, these are the ones? Yeah, that's mine. Simply a lie. He gave them to me. All right, two okay. five, show me. No. Yes. Yes. You're going to no, place under arrest. No, my son was there, no. For shoplifting, yes. No. You want to sign a complaint, you say, right? No, I'll give okay. back to you. I'll give All right, 21, to uh, they want to sign a complaint. We're going to have one female, 10 to 5. I told you in the store, give me the I shoes. I give back to you. You didn't listen. That's why. I give back. I give back to you. Give me the shoes. You didn't hear okay, me. Here. You okay, here. You didn't want to give me the shoes. That's why. I give to you. No. Here. After what? Yeah. After what? Give me my shoes. Can you do me a favor? Um, they're get, We're going to bring her up. Yep. Just go back with him. Uh, she... Apparently she might have left the property there. Okay. Just get his info and if he has any other footage. She basically just took shoes, flipped, took the shoes off and put them on her feet. Yeah, uh, okay. At this point, the police have arrested her and she's shown that she's angry about it and she left all of her stuff inside of the store. Come on, man. No, not without shoes. Come on, let's go. We're getting your shoes. We're getting the property. Listen, stuff, listen the officers are going to get your property. They're gonna bring it to headquarters, and you'll have it all at headquarters. We gotta put you whatever you have, your shoes and stuff. You just said. No, I need my chocolates now. You're not getting them now. You're placed under arrest. But the thing is, why did I give back the shoes then? Because that's their shoes. You stole them. Okay, so can I get mine back? You are gonna get them back. I just explained that to you. 
After we get you to headquarters. All right, well, that's not happening. You're under arrest. Oh, I should have never given it back then. We were going to get it back regardless. But still, miss, that's not going to be fair. We can't steal stuff, miss. That's it. All right, Let us man. just process So I'm going to be barefoot walking like this? You're not barefoot. You got socks on. Can I make it clip 10-12? Miss, sit in the car, please. Don't make this harder than it is. We're going to get up to headquarters, process you, and then release you. Good. Okay? If they release my bro, I'm going to f***ing wear a All right. Just put the seatbelt on her. When Alicia was taken to the police station, she insulted the female officer by calling her a number of inappropriate names. Miss, easy, nice and easy. Come on. She's just trying to guide you in. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna take that home because I'm not. All right, just face the wall for me over here. Ugly, ugly, bro. How you got such an ugly person working? That is so ridiculous, bro. Right. She makes whole look ugly. Alright, go anyway. in with her, okay? The police have made the decision to check her and see if she has any other items that she may have stolen from the shop on her. Miss, she's got to search you, okay? I don't give a Put your hand on the wall. Oh, blood. I need my stuff back. We're going to get it for you. I don't want my chocolate and I don't want some socks. Okay, miss, please put your hand on the wall. Thank you. Yo. That one too. Both hands. Thank you. Keep them up there, okay? Alright, we're gonna take the record. I can do it. Just the same with me though. It's going on the bench. No, because I'm cold. I'm okay, not okay. Bench. She's gotta search you. Oh, no, you're not taking this in my no. property. Get, put it right here. Let's go play game. No, you'll put it back on. She's not. We gotta search her. During the course of her search, Alicia's conduct became so disrespectful, she informed the female officer who was searching her that she seemed to be a Spread your legs. It's an order. Spread your legs. You're making it so difficult for no reason. Ouch. I don't like you, bro. Alicia faced shoplifting charges for intentionally taking merchandise. After being processed at the Hoboken Police Department, she was taken to the Hoboken University Medical Center for medical clearance before being sent to the Hudson County Correctional Facility for incarceration. Now, unlike Alicia, the next suspect we're about to discuss didn't settle for just stealing shoes. They went for a big haul of expensive items. The female suspect was confronted by the police regarding a serious shoplifting incident, but her denial of the theft escalated the situation further than it would have otherwise. Can I fix my coaching before you men approach me like that? That is disgusting. You've been driving around all this time. I literally just out. pulled out the You know what? I gotta call my lawyer. I'm gonna tell you one more time, if you don't get out, you're gonna be arrested. I'm just trying to find my pup car that fell back there, sir. And before any officer comes to search me, I've been sexually asked three times, I would like a female officer here to search me. We don't have a female officer. Well then you guys cannot search me, because I can take you that to court. What all did you take from the store? I didn't take nothing. What happened in the store? The lady, she told me to put my back, so I put my back. And she was talking to me, I said it could take me two minutes, I could have paid in line. So the lady started talking to me, I told her, this is your job. You work customer service, respect me, and I respect you. Okay. She started disrespecting me, so therefore, I disrespected her. I apologize. I was just trying to get the wanted from the store. Nothing was taken? No. It's from this point on that the troubles would begin, as the suspect attempted to behave as though she was more knowledgeable about the law than the cops. I'm gonna get my puff bar right there from the back and then I'm done. Get your what? It, my, my vape, it fell in the back seat. I'm just gonna grab it. I'll roll the window down, but can I close it for the heater? Huh? I'll roll the window all the way no, down. Stay out. I asked you to stay outside. 
Okay, well, can you go buy me a jacket since I'm cold then, since I gotta stand outside? You can sit in the back of the car. I've never been, um... Just step out of the vehicle, okay? Sir, I know my rights. Okay, and we okay. asked you to stay out of the vehicle. I, I let you go vehicle. in you to get the look. vape, and then I'll you didn't come back out. I'll call my lawyer right now if you want me to. So. i call my lawyer right now, how about that? When the suspect was unwilling to exit her vehicle, the cops dragged her out violently, which caused the suspect to begin to scream and cry. Out of the car, Crystal. Crystal. Can I get my phone, please? Crystal, get phone. out of the car. Out of the car. You're not gonna put me out of the car. Leave that more than once. Dog, look at my wrist. Look at my wrist. Stop. My dog, Dude. my arm. Let go of my arm! Who's this? Oh, f***ing dog! Hold on. Who's this? 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 You gotta get I'm not being detained yes, for nothing. For what? Let's go. For our investigation. Let's go. What investigation? I want my lawyer. Okay, well, you can have one after we get done with our investigation. Go to your... Dog, quit pulling my <laughs> arms like that. What the then fuck? Then walk. Well, if you would let me run like a horse. You had plenty of chances to do what we asked you to And do. I was trying to do no, it. No, you were not. But every time you guys do this have to me with my phone, y'all Have a seat. Sit down. Sit down. Have, have a seat. Somewhere. 102. 102 in yours? 115. Bet. Have a seat. Ashley! Sit down. You, you don't have the right to push me. Or put your hands on me. That's I could get you guys We've given you multiple commands and you failed to. I will do it, but let me Crystal, go. Get, get in. inside. I have social anxiety. You're making me get free right in now. Sit down. Well, let me go and I will get sit in. Sit down then. Let me go get and I will. Get your foot in and sit down. Dog. Following their investigation of the vehicle, the cops discovered the stolen items and brought them back to the shop. Is this your guys' purse, though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have bags? Yes. At the police station, the cop discovered the suspect was hiding another item that had been stolen in her bra. Therefore, the cop made an effort to talk to her about it. What I need you to do, I need you to sit up straight, I need you to grab your bra, and I need you to pull it. You don't need to reach them both. You need to just reach your bra and pull it outward. I want to talk to my lawyer. Call him down here. Call him down here. Pull your pull your bra I away am. from your chest. I'm trying to get it, sir. Can I do that? Pull. Look. Nothing coming out. What else? Uh, what else is in your What else is in your shirt there? Where? Like, do you want me to strip for you? You are not a woman. Officer. I'm not. I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to pull it's your. It's my respect as a woman. Okay, I'm not asking you to take off any articles of clothing. All I asked was for you to pull your your bra and I did. away from and your you're chest. Like, what else is in there? Okay, and it looks like something is protruding from the middle of your chest there. It's called a n sir. No, not quite. The suspect eventually disclosed the stolen item that had been hiding in her bra, but she also pleaded with the cop to spare her from being jailed. You need to get it out now, or we're going to get it out of the jail. So you can either be honest, or we're going to find out once we go to the jail anyway, okay? Do you wish to answer my questions? Will you talk to me? Yes, can you negotiate with me? I'm going to talk to you. Thank you. Did you pay for this item? Did I pay for it? I don't know. I did some stuff up to the registry, then she started me out and cutting me out. And okay, so why would you have that inside of your bra? Because she didn't want to take out with the rest of my stuff. So you just decided to put it in your bra? I'm saying I don't know if I paid for it or not. I just know it was in my bra. If I did or didn't, there it is. So it just appeared inside of your shirt, inside of your bra, and you don't know if you paid for it or not. Sir, I'm dealing with so much right now. Do you understand? I have a personal... I'm only 19. Okay. You know how many family members I've lost? This right here? I need to go be with my family, dog. So that involves this being that in your shirt? That was not... Alright, thank you. Now the cops began to transport her to the hospital so she might get medical clearance. Thus, when she arrived at the hospital, her demeanor escalated into conflict. 
In addition to violently assaulting the police and medical personnel, she refused to change into a hospital gown. Let like, go of me! No. Let go of me! Nope, now you can go back to the van. Well, let go! You're squeezing my f***ing tight as What the f*** wrong with you? I have a right! Now you have better. I have a right! Look at this! And you want me to go down? Get off my leg! Get off! Get off of my leg! Get off of me! Ow! What the f is wrong with you people? What the f What the f Get the f off me! Get the f off me! That was your leg. Yeah, I know. Get off of me! The suspect faces several charges, including shoplifting with a value of more than $500, but not more than $2,500, tampering with evidence, three counts of assault against a peace officer, and two counts of resisting, evading, or obstructing an investigator. In August of 2022, over in Albuquerque, New Mexico, law enforcement received a call about a theft at a nearby mall. The officers had their body cams rolling as they confronted a woman they suspected of swiping stuff from the shopping center. They approached her, urging her to drop the bags and surrender. But instead of playing along, the woman decided to make a run for it and dashed into another mall. The officers weren't about to let her slip away, so they used bean bags to try and slow her down. Despite the pretty clear-cut evidence, the woman stuck to her guns and vehemently denied any involvement in the whole shebang. Hey, brother. I got, I'll, I'll do the beanbag thing, you know? Okay. People less lethal. I just figure we, uh... What do you... What do you think, brother? Wanna, okay. Right. You wanna, uh, you wanna step up with me? Yeah, I'll step up with you. We'll, we'll go to the... There she is. Let's get her. Stop. Stop. Turn around, face right to me. Turn around, face right to me. Turn just do what we say, all right? If you do what we say, you're not free to leave. You are being recorded, okay? Just do what we, do what we tell you and force. Turn around, face away from us. Keep your hands on top of your head. Turn around, face from us, okay? Turn around and face away from us. There you go. All right, keep your hands on top of your head. Ma'am, ma'am. Well, after a pursuit, she was apprehended within the mall, and her attempt to evade officers was met with horrible failure, shattering any confidence she might have had about escaping the consequences of her actions. Have a seat. Have a seat. Okay, I'm fine. Cross your feet for me. Like this? Yes. Okay, so, Master Pran, the Albuquerque Police Department, okay? Okay. So, the reason why we're contacting you is because what was reported to us was that there's a robbery at Caldwell Mall, okay? And there's a gun involved, so that's where we're contacting you, alright? Uh, okay. You match your description. So, before you say anything else, before I ask you any questions, let me read you some stuff that's important, okay? Okay, well, can you look for my stuff, please? You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to your lawyer and have him, her, present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, won't be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise his rights, exercise his rights, not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yeah. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? Um, I mean, yeah. It's a yes or no? Yeah. Okay. You have a firearm in these bags over there? Yeah. What's inside those bags over there? Stole some stuff from Victoria's Secret. Stuff you stole from Victoria's Secret? Victoria's Secret at the mall? Did anything happen between you and the security? No. No? I didn't even talk to security. So they didn't come up and try no. and stop you, nothing like that? Okay. No. Did you go to Spencer's when you were at the mall? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Anything happened at Spencer's? No. Did you take anything from Spencer's? I took a shirt. Oh, a shirt from Spencer's? Then after Spencer's, did you, is that when you went to Victoria's Secret or was it Victoria's Secret before Spencer's? Victoria's Secret later. It was after Spencer's? Okay. So, like I said, we're just going to get you checked out for your injuries, okay? You have any questions for me this time, Jacqueline? Like, what's happening? I'm sorry? What's happening? Just 
any any questions questions you may have about yeah well shoplifting resisting evading and you know if we get someone to confirm that you know you are the ones who pulled the firearm on the security guard. I didn't pull a firearm. You can look at that, videos. That, that, I never that, pulled it. Uh, I don't think I can look at videos and see that I did it. So, I mean, it may take a while for all that, but that's what we're being told, okay? So, that's why we responded the way we did. Unfortunately, the woman found herself in some serious legal hot water. She's facing charges for being a felon in possession of a firearm, having a stolen firearm, and tampering with evidence. To top it off, there's also shoplifting charges stemming from the initial incident that set off the whole law enforcement response in the first place. These allegations add up to a pretty complicated legal situation with potentially significant consequences. Here's some more uncooperative folks, this time recklessly in charge of a vehicle. February of 2020, body cam footage caught a tense showdown in Cleveland, Ohio. An officer was trying to pull over a driver who was wanted by the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department for a bunch of offenses, but the driver wasn't in the mood to cooperate. Instead, he made a beeline for an apartment and resisted the officer's efforts to get a handle on him. And just when things couldn't get crazier, the driver's brother popped out of the apartment and he wasn't any more cooperative than his sibling. Meanwhile, the officer is still trying to maintain control over the driver. Despite all the warnings, the driver ended up getting tased because he just wasn't following orders. He was then rushed to Lake West Hospital for medical attention, got patched up, and was released back into police custody the same day. Excuse me, ma'am. Please do not touch me. I'm not doing anything. Stop. You are being recorded. I did not do anything, ma'am. Get on the ground. Whoa. Get on the ground. Ma'am, you are being recorded. That's fine. Get on the ground. Get on the ground! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a Stop weapon! Sure. Get on the ground! Weapon. Get on the ground! Despite the officer's persistent attempts, the driver not only refused to comply, but also began recording the officer, insisting she was in the wrong. In this critical moment, the driver's brother emerged from the apartment, seemingly to protect him. It was precisely at this point that the second officer arrived and deployed the taser on the resistant driver. Hey, None of that. listen, this is your problem. You don't you listen, you just want to talk. Yeah. I don't know why she pulled me over. It doesn't matter if you know. She was probably going to explain it to you and you didn't want to listen. You jumped out of the car and tried to run into the house. I didn't try to run into the house. All I did is got out of the car, asked what's going on, and went to my mom's house. Two, three, one. That's it. Here, let's roll to your side here. Anything I need to worry about that's on oh, you. Man. Anything sharp. Oh, can you get this off oh, of I bet you do, and they sell it in these little baggies too, don't they? Actually, no. They, put, they gave them in the bottle. You don't have to answer that. that. I'm just... Don't matter to me. Oh, don't get that out. That's how you do it. That's the You're way supposed to, get to wait out. for the EMT. I know how this go. Yeah, you know a lot, don't you? I've never been tased before. That just hurt. I bet it does. After handcuffing the driver's brother, the officer efficiently secured him in the car. They then proceeded to the driver, aiming to transport him to jail. However, before heading to jail, a detour was made for the driver's medical evaluation. All right, let's come to our feet, man. Let's go. Just go to your knees. Go to your knees first, and there then stand up. There you go. You got room in yours, or you got somebody in it already? Alright, we're gonna walk right over here, sir. Okay. We'll explain to you why you pulled me over. Alright. We're gonna do we'll all that here in a little point. bit. You had a chance you to be. You wanted to jump out of the car and try to run into the house. Here, That's the problem. Gonna, go ahead and have a seat. Get in the, get in the car. I'm being detained. I'm not being arrested, right? You're under arrest. Oh, you're under arrest. Why am I under arrest? Because everything you did after you jumped out of the car, when you turn it in an intersection, All right. I used got, my blinker. You didn't. Number one, you didn't use your blinker on. I did. I used both of my blinkers. I used my blinker when I turned left. Are you let me know when here, you want me to talk? I used my blinker turning right when I came into okay. here. You let me know when you want me to talk. Go ahead. Okay. You got off the freeway. Yeah. Use my okay. blinker. You did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then when you switched into the center lane, you did not use your blinker. You should have you okay. did that before I even came here then. If that's the case, then I did use uh, my blinker. You, okay. You done? Or you want me to continue? Because my blinker was still blinking to go into the left lane. Okay. Are you done? Then you do approach 305. I'm sorry, you approach Euclid Avenue from mm -hmm. 305. Mm -hmm. 
when you make a left turn, you got to stay in the left lane, and then you indicate to get into the right, right lane. You just went right into the right lane. That's an improper turn at an intersection. Go ahead. Okay. Driver, and then I activate down. the lights, and you continue in the Severn. I wasn't resisting. Can one of you guys beat me down? I was not resisting arrest. See me down here. I did not resist the rest at all. Okay. So when I asked you to, to stop going into the house to get on the ground, you, that's not resisting? You pulled your your weapon on me. Not at that point, no. You pulled your weapon on okay. me, and I'm unarmed. Okay. Well, it was unmistakably apparent that he exhibited a considerable degree of resistance, still refusing to acknowledge any wrongdoing, and even asserting his innocence throughout the whole encounter. So he doesn't stop. He wants to run out of the house, and he wants to run in the house. And you close the door. You did the right thing, okay? The problem is, when there's one of me, and would you understand that I'm a lot smaller, okay? Listen to me. Let me finish, okay? He's not He's not complying with my orders, and I'm by myself. And there's two of you and one of me. Though. All I did was ask you to go in the house. You can videotape all day long. I that's was your, standing in front of listen, my stand. That's fine. Listen, let me finish, man. Let me finish, okay? You can videotape all day long. I don't have a problem with that. But when there's... It? Let me finish, man. Right. Right. Let me Cutting finish, you okay? You can videotape all day long, but when I need you to go in the house while I'm trying to finish what I need to do, when there's one of me until my until my backup comes, that's all. That's the problem I have. So that's why you were being detained until I can figure out what's going on, okay? There was one of me, there's two of you, okay? I need to put myself in a better position. That's all, okay? You're not going to jail. You're not under arrest. We had to detain you until we figured right, out what was right, going right, on, right, okay? Right, right. That's all, okay? So That's all. Right. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He's running at me. Or wait for me. I I have to protect myself, okay? I understand. I'm sorry. I need to go home tonight. I don't know what's going on. I asked him to show me his hands. I didn't know he had a sling purse. He did. He complied with that. And then he's trying to run away from me. I said, don't go in the house. Okay. What's going on with him? Talk to me. That's not what I'm here for. I'm just trying to protect myself until somebody else comes. And that wasn't working either. He doesn't want to comply with anything. But when I have two of you and there's one of me, I need to do, I need to have the upper hand. I need to, I need to go home tonight. And whatever that is to make sure that I go home tonight. Okay? All I was asking you to do is just to go in the house for a minute so you can tape all you want. But listen, just listen to me at that time. Okay? I get it. It's your brother, man. I get it. That's all. All right? Come on out. Come on out. Tur uh, bend at your waist, okay? Because the locks are underneath. Wait, somebody have my glasses and my phone? Uh, I think we do, yeah. Here you go. All right, here's the deal. He's going to jail for a couple things, okay? Once he gets booked in, he'll get a phone call and let you know what's going on, okay? Right, what about my glasses? Do you know where those are? I never picked them up. Might be over here. Come on over here. Do you want me to get his phone number? I do not know. What's your phone number, ma'am? Does he live here with you? No. Okay. Okay. All right. The very day after the incident unfolded, the suspect found himself in court. He made the call to plead guilty to obstructing official business and resisting arrest. The judge handed down a 30-day stint in Lake County Jail for these charges. The second person we saw in the video got off the hook without any charges after he finally cooled down. Speaking of wild cases, here's another one where someone thought they could just give the cops the slip, but this time things took a shocking twist, literally. Just like the previous scenario, a stun gun played a crucial role in regaining control and putting a stop to the suspect's escape attempt. In Columbus, Ohio, in April of 2022, things got interesting near the Columbus Zoo. A person named Joseph Solinger was cruising along, surrounded by law enforcement vehicles managing the traffic on Route 750. The tension cranked up when a deputy approached him, asking what he was up to. Solinger's explanation was he was trying to reach his wife and kids, but when the deputy asked for his driver's license, Solinger decided to make a bold move. He hit the gas, and he did his best to shake off the pursuit, but eventually he had to hit the brakes, which led to an officer pulling out the stun gun and taking him into custody. 
Okay, and you think that trying to kill somebody is the way to do that? Give me your driver's license. Give me your driver's license. I'm asking for your driver's license. He's hey! I asked. He said he's going to the zoo. Hey, watch out. Don't let him kill somebody. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hey, man, get out of here. Go ahead. Go up. Here, hold. Stop this guy. Stop. Out here. Well, Solinger tried to run away, thinking he could escape from the police. However, he didn't get far before getting arrested and facing the consequences. Catching him was a bit tough. They had to use a stun gun on him and put handcuffs on him. Get on the ground! Do not move! What is wrong with you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No! Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. You almost hit a trooper. I'm sorry. 125, we have him in custody. Have a taser used. Start me a supervisor. It's just about my wife and kids, who are me. And, and give me a her. medic. And it's just about her. And I love you guys, and I know you don't mean to hurt me. Okay? Okay. So I just need... One in custody. I just need for you guys to help me up. Well, you're under no, arrest. You are going to jail. Down. Do you have anything on you? No, nothing at all. Just in this. Why did you not listen to us? Because it wasn't about me, it was about my wife and kids. Right. Guess what, now it's about you. Okay. Where's your ID at, man? It's, I don't have anything did on Did you me. already search it? Listen, no. just stand me up, I will not hurt you. Well, you're not moving right now. We've got a medic coming, you're going to jail. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You are. No, it's Nirvana and I'm, hurt. I'm not gonna hurt you. I swear, I just stuttered right there on What's accident. What's going on with your wife and kids? I'm trying to get to them, I just need to communicate. Okay, well that's not happening. Well it is though, because you're gonna help me and I love you and it's not about you now. There's a time for that. But right now right, I just needed sit, to get let's back sit to them. Up. Okay, okay. Sit up. Okay. I'm sorry. Alright. We're gonna go sit over right. here. Okay, that's fine too. Just, can I just right. feel my hands real quick? Just really quick, I know you guys need this. Alright, let's bring him over here to the curb and set him down. Okay. Sit down. Yes. Right here. Yes. Just can I feel my hand? It's gotta be like a movie. Okay. So they need to understand that it's okay and I love you. Just, say, just take the cuffs off. Joseph Solinger. A 36-year-old from Patscala is facing a new slew of charges in the aftermath of this incident. They include a felony charge for failing to comply, as well as misdemeanor charges for inducing panic and driving under the influence. To top it off, he's got a $25,000 bond to contend with. These next events transpired in February of 2020, when Antonio Smith found himself thrust into an unexpected situation. What initially appeared to be a routine interaction with the law soon metamorphized into an unsettling and disproportionate application of force during the arrest. About, uh, about uh, suspicious act activity, man. Suspicious activity? What? Where? What? Where about? They say yeah, someone. Can't do that camera. They told. I told next them what to I was doing. Oasis signs right here next to the El Rodeo. I told them what I was doing. I was waiting for. I was waiting for my sister, the Western Union, me some money. I always go there and get Western Union, and uh, they know me. Hey, you got your ID on you? Yes, I got my ID. What are you guys doing? Uh, we're out here investigating some suspicious activity, well, sir. I, I'm not doing anything. I've been around cameras, so I ain't, I ain't been doing nothing. Hi. Right. So what were you doing over there well, at the wall? I'm waiting on, waiting on for Western Union. Call my sister right now. She's huh? in Florida. You have a cell phone caller. Don't call, call her. Like call my sister in Florida. Don't do not do this. He was unaware that a challenging situation was unfolding when the Valdosta police came his way. It's clear how frightened he appeared, anticipating unjust accusations. Despite repeatedly asserting his innocence, it seemed like nobody was paying attention. 
This scenario reflects a broader issue where some law enforcement officers, unfortunately, may misuse their power, accusing and mistreating individuals without proper cause. What are you doing? Oh my God! What are you doing? Put your hands behind your back, like you told. Put your hands. What are you doing? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, please. Put your I hands. I was doing it in Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, my God. You broke my wrist. Oh, my God. Stop. My hey. This was a... Oh, they got, they got with the warrants over there. Oh. Huh? No, there's two different people. Because they pointed this guy out to me. Okay. I got you. 71 told about Austin 27 and 29 through Florida OLM police Sierra 530-001-74-0050. We got you. All right. Stay on the ground. Here in this moment, you can witness the law enforcement officers forcefully throwing him to the ground, displaying an excessive use of strength all while acknowledging that such force was entirely unwarranted and not required given the circumstances. No, nah, that's the other guy. The other guy is over there. They pointed out two different people. Okay. They got the guy with the with a warrant. This guy, I had just got contact with him. Oh, this is one with a warrant. No, that's why I was trying to. No, because there's two different people. That's why I was trying to figure out if I had missed something. He told him to put his hands behind his back. Because they pointed this guy out too. The people at the store pointed him out also. No, well, I thought I had missed something. We told him to, to put his hands behind his back. That's why I thought I had missed something. Cause, because it's two different people. Because they, because they, they just pointed this guy out to me. Who did? In reference to what? In reference to whatever was going on over there. They said this is the guy, but apparently there's another guy over there too. Because the lady. They wanted CT on him as well. I don't know. I had, I hadn't even asked. They just said right there, right there, right there. I'm Antonio in 1607, the one they've been talking about the witches all the time. God damn it. I'm so confused. Wait, wait. Okay, so... He's not the one with the warrant? No. No. Apparently, he has a warrant. So, so whenever they were talking to him, Swore said, hey, come over here and see if there's another guy. Because that guy said, hey, there's another guy also. So when I walk on the side of the store, people are there like, that guy, that guy, that guy. I was like, hey, he's walking through the red roof end. So I I thought this was the guy that they were calling about because oh. he said, because that guy said he's not the one that, that had to call him. They said he said it was this guy. So whenever he was walking down, I was like, all right, well, I went back to go grab my car and I and I got him stopped here. And then he was like, hey, put your hands on me back. And I thought I, I, that I had missed something. Actually, how oh. God. Hold on, sir. Hold on. Hold on. We got, a, we got an ambulance coming, okay? You don't want to talk to the ambulance? Um, oh my god. Hold on. Sir, 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 one second, one second, one second. Can, can you just can you just hang out and let ambulance look at you? Finally, it became evident that Antonio was unjustly accused and subjected to a brutal arrest by the Valdosta police. Unbeknownst to him, this distressing encounter resulted in more than just a legal battle. It left him with a broken wrist and enduring scars that would impact him for a lifetime. Oh, just give me one second. Let me let me talk to somebody real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I'll be right back. I'll talk oh, to you, okay? Oh, yeah. All right. I was getting ready to put my hands behind my back. Huh? You said what, man? As I was getting ready to put my hands behind my back, he forcefully put, picked me up. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Hey, man, let me get your address real quick. Hey, what's your phone number? Hey, what's your phone number, buddy? 229 967, it's not on, it's disconnected. Alright, and what's your last hey you still got his ID? Okay, hey you got your ID man, that'll just make it a little bit faster. And Parker Jerry Leon Nelson County wants to play cold and You don't need it? Uh just tell me your first name. I need a good name. I'm sorry. I got don't worry about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't you don't wanna wait. No. You, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
They're gonna come in there. Yeah, I guess if you want to cancel with them, you can. Are you? You want to make your pocket? Or, uh, you don't want to wait for the EMS? Mm -hmm. No. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. While he initially complied with the first officer's instructions, the situation took a turn for the worse when the second officer escalated it, resulting in this harsh takedown. Antonio Arnello Smith took matters into his own hands by pursuing legal action and filing a federal lawsuit. He alleges that the Valdosta, Georgia police officers injured him by forcefully slamming him to the ground. Furthermore, he claims they violated his civil rights by wrongfully detaining him after misidentifying him as a suspect in a panhandling case. His lawsuit seeks compensation totaling $700,000. A Flagler County police officer pulled over a vehicle due to excessively dark tinted front windows and noticed that the couple inside appeared agitated. This raised suspicion that they might be concealing something. Hello. Hi, my name's Deputy Magnuson with Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Yep. The reason why I stopped you today is because the tint in your front windows is, is definitely, or hey, it looks like it's too car. dark. We just bought the car. Okay, how long ago did you buy the car? About, a, about three months ago. We just changed it at all. Okay. See, see these things aren't tinted. Okay. They just had the one tint for some reason. All right, so what I'm going to do, I do have a tent meter, and I'm going to go, I'm going to put it on it just so I can see. All right, do you have your driver's license, registration, and proof of insurance? During the time that the suspect was presenting the paperwork of the vehicle to the cop, the cop saw the guy was feeling anxious, so the cop questioned him about it. The reason why I stopped you is because of the tent. Once I get all the documentation, we can we can cross those as we uh, as they come, okay? This is it insurance. All right. Why are you yeah, nervous? The back windows are good. She, she, she didn't get a license. Do what? She, she didn't get a license. How come you didn't, you didn't drive? I, I mean, was, you know I she didn't have a license. I was, I was, I was falling asleep and we stopped at the store. Asleep, man, and I was like, I man, I don't want to drive. drive. Yeah. A second cop stopped by the vehicle to question the suspects about whether or not there were any narcotics in their vehicle. However, the suspects were reluctant to admit that they had drugs and they did not want the cop to search their vehicle. How's it going? Hi, Hi it's Orange Gary. My name is Deputy Beausoleil for the County Sheriff's Office. I'm with the K9 unit, okay? Got a few questions for you. In the car, shouldn't be in the car. Firearms, large knives, machetes, anything at all. And drugs of any kind. The like cocaine, crack cocaine, heroin, hemp, methamphetamine, marijuana, MDMA. No. Nothing at all in the car. Okay, would you mind if I look? We're not, I don't want anybody to look in the car. Okay, that's all right. I'm going to walk my dog on that side of the car, okay? Um, is that window at all? Can you roll that window about halfway up for me? I know the keys are over here. Halfway up? Here. Right. Can you do it? Halfway up? Yeah, if you can. All right. I just don't want him jumping in the that's car or nothing, that's all. All right, hang tight for me, guys. You guys don't mind, Following that, a canine dog scented the vehicle. Also, the cop instructs the suspects to get out of the vehicle. Maybe step out of the car for me. Come back here. We'll go to the front of this car, Barry. Am I going to jail? What? Uh, so, basically... Can I shut my door? We'll get to that. All right. Basically, my canine are ordered to the odor of my car from the vehicle. Okay? Oh, this is ridiculous. Is there anything in that car that shouldn't be in the car? Or no. anything that was in the car that shouldn't be in the car? No, and he didn't alert to anything because there's nothing in the car. Okay. But nothing at all? No. Okay, do you have anything on you? No. Okay, do you use drugs of any kind? No. No? Okay. The female suspect was given one more opportunity to say whether or not there were any drugs in the vehicle before the cops examined it. However, she did not make any statement. So how long have you been on inmate release for? For years. For years now? Okay. Well, no, I just, the reason why I'm asking is I just want you to be honest with us. You know, like, if there's something in the vehicle, just let us know. You know what I mean? It's what, it's, one of those things it sucks if there is but you know, so whenever you lie to us yeah. and it makes the situation worse right following the discovery of certain narcotics the police made the decision to detain the suspects for the meantime i'm going to have you turn around um put your hands up on the vehicle for me all right i'm going to have you put the uh, you can drop your uh, vape and keys and everything i'm going to have you put the you hands to the small of your back to what the small of your back the small of your back <laughs> Why 
Why is he getting arrested? Nobody's under arrest at this time, okay? Yeah, we are. You're just being detained, that's all. That's being arrested. It's not. The driver faced a third violation, which encompassed driving with a suspended license, possession of drug paraphernalia, and having fentanyl. Furthermore, the passenger was charged with maintaining a public nuisance, permitting an unauthorized person to drive, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of fentanyl. Cops have to deal with all kinds of people in their job. Every now and then, they may even run into someone they know, as is the case next. Upon spotting a dark green Sentra with an expired registration, the officer opted to initiate a traffic stop. While conducting the stop, the officer recognized the male driver, with whom they had prior interactions. Hello, how are you doing? I'm Sergeant Cartwright, Bentleyville Police. The reason I'm stopping you is your tags are expired on this vehicle. I'm working on it. Okay, Morning do you have a driver's after license after proof insurance? Yeah. No. You don't have a driver's license or insurance on you? No. Okay. <clears throat> Who, are you the registered owner? Zero four five zero four four. You are. Doing you do again? own it too. Are we really doing this again? What? I, why do this again? I what just you, got a job, dude. I'm just beginning to make money. What's your What's your social? Can I leave? No. What's your social? I guess okay. I won't go to work tomorrow. <clears throat> what's What's your social? Is that the case? Are you gonna give me your social or not? Can you answer the question? What's that? No. What's your Are you question? Going to work tomorrow? That's up to you. I don't know. As a result of screening the individual's information, the cop discovered that the man was subject to a license forfeiture suspension in addition to an outstanding warrant issued by the Cleveland Metro Parks Police Department. Okay, Mr. Tish, you have you step out of the vehicle for me, okay? Why, dude? Because the vehicle's got to get towed. You're suspended. You, you have a warrant out of the Metro Parks. You're a monster. No, call me what you will, all right? Get but still, it, you can't can drive you, can you suspended. That? Can you absorb that instead of being like all... No, it's all absorbed, you all right? So we're going to have you step out for me, all right? Is there anything you need in the vehicle? I need the vehicle itself. Well, you can get that out once it becomes valid, all right? I don't even have You're not the registered owner. You're not the right. Why? Let me ask you something. Why are you driving then? You're not driving to work. You're driving because to the park. I have a life. Calm down. I have a life. All right. Leave me alone. Leave me well, alone. I have hobbies. I have people. I okay. like to Okay. Well, other people have to register a vehicle. Why makes you different than anybody else? Why? At this point, the suspect's anger problems were brought to light. Therefore, when the man was first instructed to exit the car, he did not comply with the cop's instructions. You're gonna go to jail. All right. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're just compounding your issues. Do you have a life? Okay. No, I don't. Apparently, I don't. Okay? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of that. Okay? You know things you do? Yeah. Family? People you see? People you know? People Got you Got nobody. Know? It's just me. By myself. Why don't, why don't you call a friend or a family member right now to come pick you up and then... Can all I can even you give your courtesy right right back up to your mouth. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Well... We're doing the best we can here, okay? The best you can do is not enough. Oh, and, and the best, what your best you can do is just let you drive away and just no, never to bother you. Yes. Just free to go, do whatever yeah. you want, right? That would be nice. It doesn't work that way, Addison, all right? So, don't, don't man, let go of my, these are my possessions. you're about to go to jail. These are my you possessions. You want to go to jail? Do you want to go to jail? I'm asking you, do you want to go to jail? Right now, either step out the car now. What's the option, bro? What's the other option? After some time, he was extracted from the vehicle, and while he was heading towards the police vehicle, the suspect slammed his handcuffs on the police vehicle, causing significant destruction to the paint and decals. Step out of the car. Come on tight, bro. Yeah. yeah. Step Pull out of the car. Up, bro. Yeah. Step out of the car. Stop Pull being like this. My other arm, bro. You know, you just made me sit in a hot car. My oh, that's unfortunate. Hard. Really unfortunate, Addison. You You're really need to grow You're up. Fortunate I have you really, you, bro. you really Can need I tell to grow you that? up. Can I tell you, you that? You really need to grow up. Knock it. Yeah. Eye for an eye, brother. Oh. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad. You're fortunate. Knock it off. 
Holy cow. The cops were upset that he had damaged their police vehicle, and they approached him about it. Unbelievable. Could have been a whole lot easier, man. We could have given you. We could have given you a ride. Your mom's house. He was willing to give so? you a courtesy ride. I'm trying to give you a courtesy ride, but you have You're to act no like this. You're no courtesy to me. Well, You're nothing I want in my apparently life. Apparently, anybody's not a courtesy to you. We got another one, guys. Hell yeah! I'm glad you pulled up. We're good for now. Hey, Jake. When questioned further, the suspect stated he had intentionally caused damage to the police vehicle and that he was pleased with his actions. How come you did this to the side of the door, Addison? I was being apprehended in a manner that, um... That you didn't like, so you decided to correct, scratch this door correct, up, huh? Correct. Because immediate punishment does more than oh. a ticket. So you're you're immediately scared. punishing yes. us by scratching our door. I did, didn't I? You did this in such a purposeful manner. Yeah. Wow. All eye right, sir. Eye for an eye. Somebody oh. said that. Yeah. Okay. Addison Tish faced several charges in retaliation to this incident, including vandalism on a government entity, obstruction of official business, driving with a suspended license, and having expired license plates at the time of the incident. Furthermore, court documents indicate he was charged with criminal damaging by the Solon Police Department, likely related to the events that took place at the prison. Damaging a police vehicle is pretty dumb. But there's few things dumber than speeding, as our next driver is about to learn. Deputy Krista Rainey from the Flagler County Sheriff's Office conducted a traffic stop on a white Dodge Charger. The reason for the stop was that the vehicle was traveling at 63 miles per hour in a zone where the speed limit was only 50 miles per hour. Do me a favor, don't use your phone, okay? It's an officer safety thing. One of the most dangerous things we do are traffic stops. The next thing you know, you tell somebody that you got pulled over and we got angry somebody showing up on a traffic stop and then we got to divide our attention, okay? Is your vehicle shut off? Is your vehicle shut off? Okay, can you take it out, the keys out of the ignition and step out of the vehicle for me, please? The first suspect was arrested and the cop questioned him as to whether or not he had any narcotics. However, the first suspect told the cop he had very little which is a lie. Hey, hang on one sec. Do you have a medical marijuana card or any hemp in the car? Okay, because I have, I, I can smell marijuana coming from that car, okay? I'm not bust, I'm not looking to bust somebody for just a little bit. If you got a little bit, tell me and we'll work with you. But if you don't tell me, I'm, I'm going through the car anyway because I have probable cause. So you're better off right now if you got a little bit, just telling me and we'll, and we'll talk about it. If anything, it's probably just some stuff in Asheville. I know it roaches. Okay, and that's it? Okay. Probably, uh, okay. Probably just the roach. What's my car? Spread your feet. Spread your feet. Nice and wide. Now the cop removed the second suspect from the vehicle, who is a dangerous individual. In, in addition, the cop explained to the second suspect why they were stopped. Okay, um, go ahead and put your phone down. Come on, step out for me, okay? Did you hear us explaining him why why we pulled him out of the car? Why was it? What's that? I said, why was it? Okay, come on over here and we'll explain it to you too, okay? Come on to the back of the vehicle. Because there's marijuana, odor of marijuana, right here, right here. There's odor of marijuana coming from the vehicle. Keep your hands out of your pockets, okay? At this point, the first suspect attempted to behave in a manner that was very shady, which led the cop to decide to handcuff him. Turn around, because you're being a little, you're being a little, spread your feet. Spread your feet. You're just a little too uncooperative, and I don't want any more issues. These are not, you're not under arrest. You're being detained. They come off as quickly as they go on, all right? But I don't need to worry about this for officer safety, all right? I'm going to make sure that... I lock them up so they don't pinch down on you. The right one, I mean, left one is just a little bit tighter. I have it's, this brace nope, right here. My, I, I have a torn ligament. Okay, listen That's to me. I'm just, listen, I'm just saying it's a little tighter than the right. That's okay, all. Okay, listen to me. I can you feel my finger in there. If okay, I can fit a finger, they're, they're properly fitted. I'm just saying the left one's a little tighter than the right. That's all I'm saying. I, have I, under, a torn I, under, I understand I'm just, what I'm you're saying. One, I'm just saying. I just under, so, I've understood what you said. Okay. 
but they are properly fitted. If I can fit my finger in there and that's the proper, but let I'm, me finish my gut. Stop talking. This is exactly why you're in handcuffs right now because you're being a little difficult. Suddenly, something that was not anticipated occurred. The second suspect started to fight the cops and attempt to flee while reaching for his waistband. As a result, the cops signaled for further assistance since the second suspect continued to resist arrest. Don't be reaching your pockets, just hands behind your head, okay? Come over here. Right over here. Stop and turn around, you're not listening. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for you. Stop, then do what we're asking you to do. Relax, spread your feet. While the second suspect was putting up a fight, other cops arrived. As a result, the second suspect was given many warnings to cease struggling, or else he would be tased. With the criminal continuing to struggle and refusing to remove one hand from his waistline, Deputy Biosolil decided to deliver a total of four drive stuns to the individual. After a while, the second suspect was finally put in handcuffs. You're gonna get tased again. Do not move, do you hear me? Reaching for shit. Talk to you. Why didn't you just try to run? The second suspect was found to have a loaded nine millimeter pistol hidden in his waistband. As a result, he's facing charges of resisting arrest with violence and carrying a concealed firearm. He was taken to the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility. Additionally, he was arrested on the outstanding warrant issued by Fulton County and is currently being held as a fugitive from justice. There's no option for bail at this time, and he remains in custody. Here, we have a homeless woman who was caught shoplifting at Dollar General. When the cops stopped her, she got pretty angry. They tried to talk to her about what happened, but she became more and more resistant. Hold on. Hey, come here. Why are you doing me? Come here, both of you. I need to talk to you. Yeah. Sir, please. Were you, were you with her? No, no he sir. wasn't. Sir, please. So, you come over here, please. Please, sir. Ma'am. Sir, please. Ma'am. Please. I need to talk to you. About what? Please. About Dollar General. Please, sir. I don't have anyone. I'm like, you say they're cool with it. Please. Okay. Please, sir. What is your name? Please. Please, look at that. Let's, let's start like, first. Like, we're on mission and stuff. Like, I, I'm having a hard time. Like, what I is your name? I'm going to right now. I'm okay. so sick of it. What is, ah! what is your name? That's not Understandable. I, come on! What is your name? Just let me go! You're not free to go. That's not cool! You're not free to Please, go. Please, sir! What is your name? Please! What is your name? I pay for everything! Understandable. Why would you do that? I don't have anything! The stress that the suspect was experiencing as a result of being caught stealing had caused her to vomit on the floor at one point. Additionally, when the cops started to read her Miranda rights, the suspect began crying and screaming, claiming that she could return to the store and pay for the things and that the clerk had requested her to leave before she could pay for them. Please, man, can we work for it? Okay, Chloe, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. Like, really? I need all of your friends, all of your children. Chloe, listen to me. <laughs> sir, please. Chloe. Work something out with me right here, sir. Well, we're trying to figure out what's going on. So you need to work with us, okay? Okay, sir. Okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything sir, you say. Please, no. I'm just gonna read this to you. Anything you say can and will be used no, against you in the court of law. You are cheating me right now. I'm I don't out. like that. What? No, fix that now. What? Now. The fact that police were getting ready to arrest the suspect caused her to become scared and enraged, so she tried to get away when they informed her they were about to arrest her. Nevertheless, the police were able to catch her. That's her fault. Okay. So I should, I, I have the right to leave. Excuse Listen me, sir, I'm talking to him. him. Listen to me. Excuse me. Listen to me. What's wrong with him? Can you get him? Listen to him. I, I was talking to you, right? Listen to him, okay? 
Chloe, is, listen to him. Is about authority? Chloe, listen to him. He wants like, to talk to you, on. okay? Come on. He's trying to talk to you. Sir, come listen on. to him, okay? Let's be respectful. Can we have a, a real human? Like, you know what I mean? I'm tired of that shit. My life is hard enough, guys. Okay. You guys don't want any money to get paid? I'm tired of being held back by you guys. I. She told me to leave before I could pay for it. Okay, so, turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Sir, I don't deserve turn to around. get arrested. Chloe. No, I'm begging you. Please. Chloe, come here. Please. What are you doing? Give me your arm. Let go, I'm done! You're about to cut your goddamn Stop. phone. Quit. Stop! <laughs> During the ride in the police vehicle, the suspect insulted the cop. Let's take a tire. I'll take it. Okay? Do you understand? You're a fucking loser. Oh, your daddy gets on you? Ten Daddy has a hit out for you? As soon as they arrived at the police station, the suspect continued to make derogatory statements. And at one point, she started to make another cop feel uncomfortable. Are you guys on board yet? Because I'm tired of this. Can you get your nuts out of my face? Relax. I'm talking to people, dumbass. Lower your Excuse me, I'm not yourself a little baby, dumbass. Go where? Go where? I'm talking to people. Excuse me, I asked for some water. At one point, the suspect asked for a drink of water, but the officer was reluctant to provide her with a drink of water, which caused the suspect to become very angry. Do you think you could go give me some water, please, sir? Uh, yeah, I think I think I think you can give me the water while okay, I'm doing Finish, this finish up with her, okay? That doesn't make sense, though. I'm asking okay. you to give me some water. Okay, and I'm telling you, you're gonna finish with her. But I'm asking you to give me water. What does that have to do with you? Go do your job. Answer her questions. I am. Okay, great. What are you not understanding? What do you not understand? Ask me questions. <laughs> um, she's like kind of allowing me time to like explain to you like you're a mom. Like you have a job to do with some water. Okay, I'm doing my job. And, and what is it? Making what is sure it? that you're going to be cordial with the Um, nurse. I think, I think I am. Okay, we'll continue. Oh, I see, I heard it. It's crazy. Wow. The water that the suspect had asked for was finally delivered to her, but not before she humiliated the cop. Excuse me, can someone give me some water? Oh, it's up for her. Oh, it's for me? Oh. Right here. Oh, okay, okay. I might need like a quick refill, okay. obviously. I'm like so thirsty, I'm dying. Okay. Uh, I, I can get it for you, just so you don't spill it. No, I think I can drink myself, you dumbass. I don't want you to pour my water for me. Give me the cup. You're gonna calm down. I have a hand. Okay, and you're gonna calm down before you get this. Thank you. Calm down. What the f The suspect faced multiple charges, including shoplifting for an amount under $250, resisting arrest, and assaulting a peace officer. Dollar General decided not to press additional charges, but they did issue a criminal trespass warning to the suspect, barring her from returning to their store. Now, this next case is a similar story, but with a different protagonist. It's more shoplifting, but this time they're entitled and rich. The story kicks off when a cop arrives at the Walmart security office, where he encounters three pretty arrogant women. It's clear they have little regard for what they had done. <laughs> Excuse me. You just have to verify my identity. I do. Yeah. How much was it they took? How much? Can you tell me, please? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't even know where the number is. Thirty-one. Yeah. Thirty-one. Are you thirty-one dollars? Can I see what it's for? Yeah, check out for thirty-one dollars. I know, I have had, like, it was at this moment that the cop discovered how young they were and questioned them about their crime. However, they refused to acknowledge the shoplifting allegations that the cop had made against them. Damn, you're young. Yeah, I'm only 19. I mean, did you not see my age? I don't really want to pay attention to it. I was just reading names. I'm 19 too. I'll be 20 with you. And y'all still looking for Walmart? I ain't still looking for Walmart. Y'all wouldn't be in here with me if y'all ain't still nothing. <laughs> After the cops saw the surveillance footage, he approached the women and inquired about the possibility of searching their handbags. 
In addition, when the cop informed them that they would be sent to prison, they experienced a sense of astonishment, as if they had committed no wrongdoing. Do y'all have anything in y'all purse that's like a weapon or anything? Mm -hmm. Mind if I look? You want to look at our purse? Yep. Here, what? <laughs> okay, but I got some Cause that's crazy. Right, right, right. Like you didn't see us put nothing in our purse. So. Okay. It's not a weapon. Can I hit this in here? That's not a weapon. That's up to them. Can I hit this in here? I don't even know. I can break it <laughs> God, damn. I see what I got in my bag. I don't see me. Wait, you want to check my bitch? But could I? It's not. All of this? Okay. You better take my leave. Yeah. So I could, you better Please take my stuff. Yeah. I can't. For what? Cause. You can't you, take this with you to the jail? This is what I what? You can't take this with you to the jail? What? Wait, jail? Yeah. Who the f is going to jail? Yeah. Who the f what? Hold on. Are you serious? Yeah. No, yeah. Are you dead? All three of the women were arrested by the cop. On top of that, they were behaving as if they were shocked and as though it was unfair to them. Stand up. Turn around. Why are you? Wait. Why are we? Drop the phone. They're locking us up. They're locking us up. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Yo, mom. Yeah. I'm getting arrested in Walmart. Go ahead. So, um, yeah. I'm getting arrested in Walmart. Hold on, hold on. I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Come outside. Because we're working outside. Because some stuff was in at Walmart, bro. You went over a dollar. I feel like I could have just taken the money off my card and paid for it, bro. Oh, my God. We're coming outside. Come right, on. Come on. Get off, come on. 26, can you run them all for 543s? Yeah, we're sticking up and we're going with you. No! Is this your phone? It is this one? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll loosen it up for you. Come on, Yeah, I got you. Yeah, and this is white. Okay, I got a question. Why are you so. Ooh, ow! I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to loosen it. I'm trying to open the key. I was just trying to loosen it. Alright, put your hands together like you're playing. Like you're praying. Calm down because this is not tight on my arm. All right, you good now? Yeah. All right. Let me fix my dress. Let's go. Come on, we're about to come on. Well, we're all the way. I have carpet tunnel on my wrist, so be careful. Y'all can sit next to her right there if you don't mind. I'll bring your phone and ID with y'all and all that to do. Um, do I need my ID at the jail house, though? Nah. Okay, they'll... I don't have it. Wait, is there like a bail or something? Yeah. Yeah, there'll be a bail. Tell him that. Are you serious? Uh, are you getting arrested right now, Monica? Tell him. So, like, text him and tell him I have money in my tote bag. Bro, I have... Okay, but I have to... You're in custody. You're not... I need this right now. Okay, but I need to call my bail. You can call them. Once you get there, they'll give you a call. Immediately upon the completion of the investigation, the cops removed the ladies from the store and brought them to the police vehicle. Cover my face. You know what? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, cover your face. The blanket's gonna fall off though. Yeah, Let me see that blanket. I'll bring it with you, but Wait, you I'm gonna bring it with you. Damn, yeah, I look too pretty to be locked out. This is. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I really don't. This is f***ing my name. Dead dog. We're getting the same car. This is my first time going to jail. Oh my god. Is that him? Alright, y'all gonna get in this car right here. Can I get in the front? No. Where you going? Y'all get in the front? I'm going on the front. Okay, don't go in the door. How you gonna open the door? I'm gonna open it. Walk. Shit. You got it? Okay. Oh, it's freezing. Get my blanket. Get my blanket. Get I my blanket. can't. You got to get in. Come on. Ay, ay, ay. This freaking thing is cold. I can't close the door, sir. It's dirty. I'll have them clean when we get there. Wait, but, but I got white in. on. That's my problem. You still got to get in. It's get not going to stick. It is going to stick. You'll be all right. That's the stuff.
As a consequence of swiping three items worth a total of $31, all three culprits faced retail theft charges, which landed them in the Lake County Jail. Interestingly, two of them decided to plead guilty and were handed six months of probation. A woman who was very mad at the cops gets arrested in a hurry. But there was a moment off camera where she decided to go after the cops. I didn't do anything again! Why? I do nothing! <laughs> Why do nothing? You guys don't do anything for me! Why? Why? <laughs> Why? After the cop had arrested her and placed her in his police car, she began acting as if she was sobbing and claiming that she was in a great deal of pain. And just to let you know, you are being recorded. You're under arrest for assault. To touch me for this. I'm going to read you your rights. Listen, you, you assaulted me, period. That's what I want to protect. You have the right to remain silent. Uh, you, Anything officer, you say can be used against you in a court of law. You just violated my civil rights. You have, you have no the right reason this to time touch to me right talk now. To your lawyer and have I told you, you there's being no questioned. reason to talk to me, and you if do you not understand. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, to to one you. will be appointed to represent you before You're the question if you, if you wish. Liar. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights. Do not answer any questions, questions or make any statements. Do you understand the rights I've explained to you? You have no reason to talk to me. Do you want me to read them again? You have no reason to talk to me. I'll read them again if you Where's like. Where's my bail? You're going to see a judge tomorrow. Don't lie to me. I'm you not guys have I have no reason before. to lie to you. Absolutely. Are you okay? I'm upset. Do you need any medical attention? No, are you just assaulted me. Are you injured? <laughs> my neck hurts. Are you injured? <laughs> Do you need me to call paramedics for you? Yes, I don't feel good. My everything hurts right now. Where is your injuries? <laughs> The female suspect made an attempt to accuse the cop of inflicting pain on her throughout the arrest process. What? Yeah, I'm not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. No, we'll I let the judge decide whether I did was right or wrong. It was disgusting, okay? and you violated my rights again. And I don't appreciate it because you know I'm shell shocked from it already. You I don't even. You are. Yeah, sure you don't. What's okay, your name? Sure, sure you don't. What's your name? <laughs> What's my bail? You have no bail at this point. Why? Because that's the law. That's in violation of my rights. Okay. All right. Well, you can dispute that with the judge. That's I'll fine. I can dispute it with them today. What's, what's your name? I can dispute it with them today. Are you going to get booked in as a Jane Doe? <coughs> is that it? I don't know what the my name is today, okay? I just don't feel good. My neck hurts, and I'm not trying to do anything crazy. All right. I'll have an aid unit come and check you out, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you. Do you want me to roll the windows down? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> The cop proceeded to see the second suspect, who did not want to reveal his identity. Nonetheless, the cop believed that he was the boyfriend of the woman who had been arrested. So right now, you, like I told you before, you're being detained for suspicion of attempted theft. All right? You're observed opening mailboxes. Okay. And then you obstructed my investigation, failed to identify yourself. No. All right. So here's where we're at right now. What is your last name, first name, and Middle initial and date of birth. I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay. You and can. I do not have anything outstanding, nor am I failing to identify myself. However, you I are. am stating right to you, you that I have done nothing wrong. I, and I hear you. Okay. And that's why. So I, then, when, please. Following that, the cop went back to the female suspect in order to get more information about the mail and the reasons they had stolen it. Did, did you go through any other mailboxes? No, just the sir, one? Just that, that's it. And I only opened it because in Bellingham they don't give me money more if they don't open it. And those are elders that I know, so they didn't want that to happen to them. Okay. Do you understand that this could have been resolved very quickly if you would have just talked to me? I was, I was, I felt weird. I'm naked and it's hot. I know, well, like I said, I have lots of concerns of what's going on. I'm like, sorry. part of that is your welfare as well. It's really hot right now. I see that you're sweating. <laughs> Following that, a female sheriff arrived at the location in order to transport the subject to prison. However, the subject argued with the sheriff as she was going to the police car. Hey, let's go over this way. Okay. You're gonna do some of that. Um, don't cool. touch me and I'll walk We're perfectly fine. Nope, you are gonna be don't. touched. You're gonna, why are you because touching my you arm? you could fall down. No, I can You're be fine. I'm not a horse, I'm a fine person and I can okay. walk fine, thank you. Right as long right as right you don't touch me, I'll get in your car. Right I'm not a Anymore. I'm not a police dog. Don't you can wait. let her. You can let her walk. It. Don't let me be your dog. I'm not a dog for real. Don't with me, man. They were arrested for allegedly trying to swipe something, but that's pretty much all the info we've got about it. 
In May of 2022, in the town of Sylacauga, Alabama, which is part of the close-knit community of Childersburg, a black pastor named Michael Jennings found himself in a challenging situation. One afternoon, as Michael was tending to his neighbor's flowers, things got out of hand. The whole incident got captured by a body cam, showing the moment when Pastor Michael Jennings was approached and taken into custody while he was simply watering his neighbor's plants. The police were called by a neighbor who was unfamiliar with Pastor Jennings and had concerns about his presence at another neighbor's unoccupied house. What you doing here, man? Water flower. Are right, they saying that? Is that your vehicle? Not. It's not? It's the neighbor's vehicle. The neighbor's? Mm -hmm. 314, I'll be on 13. Okay. Yeah, you live here? No, I don't live here. Okay. Uh, they saying that this vehicle is not supposed to be here and you're not supposed to be who here. Who's saying that? They called about it. I don't know who I, called. I, I'm supposed to be here. I'm Pastor Jennings. I live across the street. You're Pastor Jennings? Yes. I'm looking out for their house while they're gone. Okay. Uh, why didn't they fly? Okay. Well, that's cool. Now, do you have like ID and all? I don't know, man. I'm not going to give you no ID. Why not? I ain't did nothing wrong. I did well, you, look, listen. Listen, I'm not saying do nothing wrong. Nah, listen, There's a suspicious I person. A, look, I used to be a police officer in good water. Don't come in with that. Okay. Look, man, don't do this to me. No. You, there's a suspicious person in the yard, and if you're not one to identify yourself... I don't have to identify myself. I'm just not a, a stop and identify state. That the, guy know me. He can't do my story that got broke in. I live right over there across the street. Who calls y'all? That's what we got to figure out. But yeah, first, who I... Calls? He don't live here. I'm not saying nothing about well, You have no right to approach me if I ain't did nothing well, suspicious listen. or nothing wrong. Listen. Told him I'm a pastor. I pastor until I don't hear you. Sir. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. Nobody wants to lock, lock me up. I'm not showing y'all anything. I'm going to continue well, to wear these flowers. I don't care who called y'all. Lock me up and see what happens. I want you to. Hey, man, just come here and talk to us. What? What? <laughs> well, if you would let us talk to you, we can figure stuff out. You know, you're, you're going to catch an obstruction charge if you keep walking away. You can do whatever you want. Do it. Do it. We're, we're just trying to talk to you, man. Come here. 313, 3, 4, 10, 4. We got one that's not listening to us. Look, man, let me see your phone. Let me see your phone, dude. Just calm down, okay? No, no. Stop. I like this. Okay. We're just trying to talk to you and Sir, see. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to argue with you, okay? I don't, All right, yeah. go ahead and do what you got to do, Doc. You you do what you got to do. Go on okay. and lock me up. Look, just have a seat. It's already locked up. You're it's just. already lost him, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Lost okay. Just have a seat, okay? Okay. already lost It all started when a concerned neighbor, unaware of Michael's presence, made a call to the police, suspecting a trespasser. What unfolded next would leave Michael feeling dehumanized and the entire community questioning the actions of those sworn to protect and serve. 1026, one black man. Sit, sit down. Sit down, man. Just, okay, let me call my wife. You're not calling nobody. My son just got racially profiled in uh, Michigan. He's got his master's degree. He's an athletic director. Three police profiling came in. I was ex-police officer in good one. I told you I'm a pastor. Okay, look, man. I uh, who called y'all? I don't have to ID myself. You will not I listen. I have a call on you. I, you have to identify yourself to me. I you don't, understand what no, I'm I telling don't. you? No, I don't. You wait watch how you want. Take me down, book me. Go do what you need to do. Go do what you need to do. I think it's going to be this. Please call my wife right quick. We're going to wait off. You're not All right. Well, y'all sit with him, Jeremy. I'm going to go yeah. over here and see people over here to call. Three thirteen. Ben. Can you have the 72 that calls, step out and talk to her? Michael's composed demeanor and efforts to cooperate were met with opposition. The officers insisted on verifying his identification, leading to a standoff that left the pastor feeling powerless and deeply humiliated, especially when they promptly placed handcuffs on him. Hey, you know what? You know what? 1015. 1015. 1015. I ain't, I ain't going to sit there and have that, dude. No, you ain't let nothing now. Appreciate it. Okay, I will. 313, show me 1051 black now. I got to get gas, so he needs to go on someone else. I'm on this car. 
I, I mean, I don't know if they called. We'll look she, on the log and see who called. I mean, I saw the gold SUV. Mm -hmm. So, and I saw him outside, and all I did said, Hey, man, do you live here? No. Nah. Is that your car? No, it's the neighbor's. So, I'm finna go over here and run the tag. No, okay. He's not going to cooperate. Oh, no, sitting there hollering. I'm trying to explain to him that we got a call and we have the right to identify him. And he says I'm talking to him like a child. If, you, if you're a pastor and you're here watering a neighbor's yard, that's fine if you got permission. No trespassing, private property. As the situation escalated, Michael's attempts to explain himself fell on deaf ears. The police, seemingly driven by suspicion, refused to reveal his identity, leading to a sequence of events that would soon make headlines. Despite Michael's verbal identification, the officers persisted. They didn't realize they were messing with the wrong person, one who knew his rights and was determined to stand his ground. This is 505. Yes. She says she's stepping outside. Are you talking to the 72? Do you know that gentleman back yeah. there? You do? Yeah. Does he, does he have permission? He lives right there. Okay, does he have permission here to be watering flowers? He may because um, they are friends. Okay. And they went out of town today. So right. he may be watering their flowers. Okay. It would be completely normal. Okay, is that's, that, that's, that's fine. If he would have said, hey, I got this, gave his identification because he's a suspicious person. Uh, he said that's not his vehicle, it's, it's their vehicle. Okay. We have a call. Like, yeah. we, we're, we're here okay. because we're called here. I don't know who called, but somebody did. Did you call us? 313. Mr. Rory Milam of Childersburg Hi. on a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. No color listed. Registration is valid till 630 of 22, negative 29. Tiffle, you did say the name's Roy Milam. Temple. Tiffle, thanks for my mix up. Um, yeah, he lives right there, and he would be watering their flowers. This is probably my fault. Okay. Do you know who Roy Malum is? That's that's the person who owns that vehicle. Roy Malum. Roy Malum. Ask him who owns the house. I don't know the guy's name. I don't know who owns. It's probably it could be their vehicle. Can do, uh, Mr. Uh, Step out. Miss uh, Sister Connie and uh. What you, what's wrong with you? My cuffs are a little bit tight if y'all don't mind loosening them up. Listen to me, man. Is that better? Listen, let, let, let me talk to you. Who is Roy Milam? That's you, ain't it? I'm Michael Jennings, sir. You're Michael Jennings. Who is Roy Milam? I don't know. Okay, that's who that vehicle belongs to. Yeah, that's who all I know his name is Roy. That's who lives here? That's right. I call him Roy and I call his wife Connie and I've been dealing with him for seven years that I've yeah. been living here. They are friends. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you called not because of the car but because you thought you saw someone besides him. Right. I didn't know it was him. Yeah. He, sorry, I got to keep their flowers watered. I got to keep their flowers watered while they're down. You okay. <laughs> and by the way, I want to get to come to the graduation but we're going to give your son something. No, don't. Listen, yeah, listen, don't listen, 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 listen to me, man. Listen to me. Anytime the police come out and they say, we want to identify you, you have to identify yourself because there's a reasonable suspicion. There's a reasonable man. There's a vehicle. There, there's a reasonable suspicion that you're here. It's not a crime. Yeah, if, you, if you would have said, yeah, here's my name, here's everything, no, we were like, I okay. I told him my name. You didn't tell me your name. I, I decided, he asked me who I was. I said, you didn't give it to me when I first Pastor asked. Pastor Jennings, Pastor Jennings. That's not a name. What was That's a pastor. Yeah. I need God, your name. The way y'all handle this situation, we're totally wrong. Well, listen. You, you racial profile. We're not racial profile. Yes, no, sir. No, sir. We're not about I that. I told okay? you I was here wanting the flowers. How do I know that's the truth? Anybody? I had the water hose in my hand. I was wanting the flowers. Can, any, anybody can pick a hose pipe up. He is going to be so pissed when I tell him I got arrested wanting his flowers. Seven years look, we've been look, friends. We got that. Look, let's sit back in here. Okay. You can sit down. Give me so we can get this going on the ball. All right. What is your social? I'm not going to give him a social. You need to give him your social. I'm not going to give him a name. That's all I'm going to give you. You're not going to run no 27 and 28 on me and get me in the system for no reason. All right, what's your name? The girl already told you who I am. Okay, yes, I'm Michael yes. Jennings. That's all you Michael Jennings. Michael Jennings. Spell your first name. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. 
A E L. That's it. Jennings. J E N N. Yes, sir. I N G S. G S. What's your date of birth? One seventeen sixty six. One seventeen sixty six. All right. Sit in the car for me. Yes, sir. We'll handle this in just a second. Can you give me a pin at the one that's hot? Yeah. Will you let the window down a little bit for him? Eventually, a less problematic neighbor intervened and clarified to the police that Michael was innocent and he hadn't done anything wrong. The neighbor, while acquainted with Michael, explained that he lived nearby, had a legitimate reason for being at the location, and was simply taking care of his friend's flowers while they were out of town. Hold on, his wife is coming, so you, so you can do this once. Okay, Come on. I looked out the door, Daddy. I was wondering where you were. Yeah. I thought she was outside because doing it. trying to make that by myself. I told them I don't have to identify myself. I have to make a crime. She came over and told them that I was, she made a mistake and they still want to try to do something to get my structure charge. Okay. Because I wouldn't okay. listen to okay. I'll tell you what's okay, going on, okay? And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so we got a call here, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we'll need his we'll need his ID. I'm just gonna take his ID and we're gonna well, we'll just, with you. Want us to take his Do whole you want wallet or just to give no, your ID? I just wanted you to know no, who he was. No, okay. No, that's fine. No, okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, if he don't give me an ID and we don't have a way to identify him, I will have to look him on John Doe. But if if he's got it, then that's fine. Okay. Yeah, no he's okay. So he's um, been identified. I'll tell you he's what identified himself. We she's identified here. him yeah. and verified yeah. who he yeah. is and where he lives. I'm the missionary, so. But when we get here, of course, we're going to immediately okay. investigate the call. Yes. Find him on scene. All he's doing is watering the plants, and that's not a problem. What do you want? What do you want to do? And we say, hey, sir, we have a call here. What do you want to see? Need you to identify yourself, please. Like, no, I'm not identifying myself. You don't have. To identify me and so on, and he began to walk away. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, we were listening, walking away, so okay. of course so we're detained. Do do? We don't know what's going on. Gotcha. After that, we radioed for them to contact okay. her, have her step out, and talk to us. Well, she does tell us it's, it's a mistake yes. and all that stuff. At this point, oh he's already God. collected the charge. We once we place him on arrest, we can't unarrest him. Does that make sense? This is so simple, and the neighbor just told him this morning, please water the plants and, and, and take care of them. I said that, but it was all house. afterwards. It was all afterwards. Yeah. And all we told him was like, if you're here to water the plants, that's okay. Just please identify yourself, just your name, and let us call the owner. And he didn't want to do that until he caught the charge. So... So uh, what do we need to do now? What do I, he, okay, he'll, what he's going to do? What he's going to go to the Chillsburg Police Department. We're going to process the arrest report. It's going to be one charge for uh, obstruction of our investigation. He'll go to the jail. He can bond out immediately. You can get your bond. It's going to be 10% of the bond. So it would be like $50. We're not investigating a crime. We're investigating a call. And we have a right to identify anybody involved in that call. But in this thing, he can identify himself. He's, he's walking away and yelling at us and telling us he has no, we have no right and we have a call there. But if he is wants it, to fight in court, is it, that's is, fine. Is it okay if I talk to him? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Is it okay? No yes, ma'am. That's fine. There's no problem. Following his arrest, Michael Jennings found himself behind bars at Talladega County Jail. Eventually, he secured his release by posting a $500 bail, as stated in the lawsuit. Legal counsel assisting Michael Jennings initiated a federal court case asserting that the three police officers from Childersburg, Alabama violated his rights under the First and Fourth Amendments. The lawsuit contends that these officers acted improperly by not adhering to the regulations outlined in the First and Fourth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. On December 5th of 2022, at 12.33 a.m., deputies responded to a tumultuous incident at a St. Pete Beach Bar. The on-site security manager and an employee reported an occurrence involving a man identified as Officer Henry Capuch, who was caught in the act of urinating on the establishment's ice machine. Efforts were made by the security guard and the employee to intervene and escort him off the premises. However, Officer Capuch became confrontational in response. Despite attempts to de-escalate the situation, it eventually led to the employee and security guard guiding the officers towards the beach, where they spotted Henry and his girlfriend. So what, what happened exactly? Uh, I, I go back to go get ice from the bar, and I see him with, he whipped his, uh, yeah, they cut off his dick out and he's pissing in the ice uh, bucket. I just poured all the pee out, and then he's being uh, verbal, abusive, and then he got physical and being humane. So the first of the whole time twice, and we're just trying to get him to go. And Do you want to press charges with a battery on him? On you? Uh, so it's the, 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 the Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, do you have your ID with you? Yeah, okay. okay. And, and then, then he's what? trying to be like tough. The big macho man? Yeah, big macho okay. man, yeah. 
And then what happened? So he got in your face? Yeah, he got in my what face. Was it? Do you remember what he was saying? Just the same verb, verbal, verbal, like, like that. Like what? That's fine. You can say it all, bro. So I told him, like, hey, bro, people use the ice out of here. That's those ice buckets. And he went back and forth with me or whatever. He started to come out. Um, I told him he had to leave. He said, I'm walking out the front. I said, walk well, out the front or you go out the side or whatever. Um, he's like, I go where the f to go. I'm like, okay, whatever, man. Just get out of here, bro. And uh, he, he turns around, pushes me, pushes. Danny comes up, steps up, pushes Danny. And I get up on him. I did grab his arm and grab his stomach. Like, bro, don't do this right now. His girlfriend screaming and stuff like that. Don't do it, whatever. And um, he began, he started to walk out. So, and then he was just cursing at him. Yeah, he got off of my case. But he did pee in the ice bucket. I mean, Danny called 911. I wasn't going to do it, and I really don't want him to get in any trouble like that, any big trouble over that. But, I mean, it's on Danny, you know, because Danny made the call. Hey, I wasn't. Did he make any other statements, like nah, threatening nah. to hurt you or anything like that? Nah, or? nah, he stopped. He stopped. He I wants to press call. charges for 38. All right. The bar employee and manager are recounting an incident to a police officer. The situation began when the employee witnessed an individual urinating into an ice bucket at the beach. Such a disgusting thing. And of course, this isn't just unsanitary, it's also disrespectful and gross to the establishment and its patrons. Get on the ground. Yeah. Put your hands behind your back. Wait, what's Hold on. Put your hands behind your back. Okay, what's going on? Hey, back up, but don't talk to me. No, we're good. Guys. I don't give a about your badge, dog. Stand up. I am standing up. Jesus Christ. Well, Henry's girlfriend saw the police and started running, but the officer caught them after a small chase and handcuffed Henry. While the police were telling Henry to stop, he kept saying he was with the Chicago Police Department. This made the situation more complicated. Okay, sit down. You're gonna push me here? You're the toughest guy I know. Congratulations. Right here. Look at you. Yeah, your yeah. precinct would be real proud of you. It's the fourth precinct honor. It's yeah. 140 percent. Yeah, I'm sure they'd be real proud of you. Get Sit down. Here. Sit down. <laughs> you stand up like that again, you're gonna taste. Think of plane. Yo, bro, I'm sitting on the sit on the bench. Bro, you're about to get dumped. I'm sitting on you the bench. Like that, bro. I'm sitting on the bench, man. Jesus Christ. What the fuck are you talking about? That's just sit on the bench, dude. Sit on the bench, bro. You, you keep your chest up. Yeah. I'm sitting on the bench. Back up, dude. I'm sitting on the bench. Henry. Sit on the bench, Sarge. Hey, Sarge. Henry. Sit down. Mm -hmm, buddy. It's right here. Mm -hmm, buddy. All right. Good, good, good. Is this a, is this a Tampa Bay police? It's a Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Pinellas, it's a what? <laughs> Bro, sit <laughs> down. Oh, you keep pushing my face in the wall here. Yeah, if you keep standing you up. my face in the wall here. Hey, have I showed any resistance? Yes, you keep, have I showed you resistance? Keep, You're about to get arrested for a Back up. I'm not kidding. I'm hey, Sarge. Hey, Sarge. Henry, stop. Hey, Sarge. Hey, partner. I need you to relax for a second, okay? I, 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 but listen to me. Listen Henry. to me. Henry! I've been here for a few minutes. You've been nothing but yelling. Relax. Henry, My body cameras right are on. Now. Just relax. Henry. You guys are not making things better for yourself. Henry. One thing at a time. Young lady. I'm definitely not yelling. Kate, back away. I'm definitely not yelling. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Just stay seated. I won't have to assist you back down every time. Assist me back down? Yeah. Henry, Have I been stop. screaming? Acting like a great Yeah, you've been acting like a the whole time. Stop. Yes. I don't believe Bro, I think you just drank too much alcohol and made bad decisions yes, tonight. Really? Yeah. Stop, Henry. Right. I hate doing this to people that are say wear the same uniform, right? But you make stupid decisions. This is what we have to do. You're not. You're not helping matters. Listen, I'm being serious, bro. I hate to do this to people. Am I talking or no? But I'm trying to get it through to you. Am I head. talking or no? Get get, go ahead. Keep getting louder. Well, after managing to restrain this aggressive individual, which was no easy task at all, it's pretty easy to imagine how he might have treated the manager and bar employee. However, he'll soon have to face the consequences of his actions. Please. Oh, thank God. I can, I can tuck myself in. Don't. Please. Do you want me to loosen these? No, I don't. Don't loosen. Don't loosen. 
What am I telling you? Am I telling you to lose I'm taking off your watch. I don't need you to watch. We can't take it to jail like that, so. I, do I need you to take it off? Well, I'm going to anyways. You gonna left my left, my left hand? You just told me you didn't want it. I just said it. Well, you're losing it. Here. You're losing this whole left hand. You don't want it, so. You guys gonna both not touch me. Well, Henry found himself in hot water and got slapped with charges of battery and disorderly conduct. He managed to get out of jail by shelling out $650 for bail. A spokeswoman from the agency confirmed he's been relieved of active police duty. But being relieved is what started this whole problem in the first place. In our next case, we have a guest that just wouldn't be flushed out. In March of 2022, at Marriott's Hotel Duval, the manager had to dial up the police when a female guest by the name of Nicole Gutierrez decided she wasn't budging, even after being told to leave. Nicole kept shifting her story and mentioning various mobility issues, which eventually prompted the authorities to get involved. Despite several efforts to get her to exit the premises peacefully, Nicole found herself on the wrong side of the law and was arrested for trespassing. And here's the kicker. When it came time to transport her, the police got creative. They used a luggage cart from the bell service. So, yeah, you heard me right. It was a luggage cart. Hey, how you doing? I'm okay, thank you. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay, well, the, the hotel just wants you to leave, okay? I can't really walk. Huh? I can't, I can't walk. What happened to your leg? I dislocated my knee. Okay. You don't have crutches? No. I'm sorry, it ain't, it ain't up to me. But somehow you made it up the steps and you made it across the lobby. Stay I literally there. can't even walk. Huh? I literally can't even okay, walk. Okay, I will help you. It's no, ma'am. Help you. Somehow you made it up them steps and you made it across this lobby. You're going to have to make it the same way out of the hotel. Look, sir, there's no reason. You why made it up the steps. steps. You made it through the hall. You made it to this far. I will help you, but you're gonna have to go out of the hotel. I'm trying to help you I'm not, not go in handcuffs. I'm standing up at the front of the hotel for a reason with a broken leg. Okay, well, I'm about to put you in handcuffs and we're still gonna go somewhere. I'm you're not, not standing I'm not getting into handcuffs. I can't even stand up. I literally can't even stand up. I'm waiting okay, for if we have to pick you up, me. we'll take you out, but you're gonna get out of the hotel. And go where? To I'm jail! I'm not going to jail. I'm gonna ask you one more time, then I'm gonna go ahead and put you in these handcuffs. How are Police you supposed to help me walk? Look, first. man, I, I'm not meaning to cause any Negative. trouble. I We're can't even talking. stand up. We're done talking. I need your arm like around me to help me walk That's out. What, didn't I say I was going to do that in the first place? The officers tried to help Nicole leave the hotel peacefully, offering assistance due to her claimed difficulty in walking. Despite their efforts, Nicole resisted, which led to handcuffs. In such situations, cooperation and communication are key to avoiding escalation. Had Nicole accepted help initially, it could have prevented further complications and now potential charges. Dude, you're not f***ing me in this. That's ridiculous. You're being so rude right now. You know that I can't walk on this leg. Not being rude. You know that with a do dislocated patella, I can't stand on that. Get over here then if you want me outside and get me out of these cuffs. I, I can't move. Okay. I need to I, get me out of these handcuffs. I'm not going to jail. All right, we're going to help you up, okay? No, this is unfair. This is completely unfair. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to jail for this. I, I've literally done nothing wrong. You need right, to get me out of this handcuffs. Don't, don't catch a resistance. Sir, I understand. Well, okay. I literally have a broken leg. You can't arrest me for having a broken leg. Look, that's honestly enough. Like, and with that, we can start walking outside. That's fine. What? Just you holding my arm like that. Okay. We can walk this way. I mean, you need to like be comfortable with providing like a little bit of support there. It's, well, I'm trying. It's super painful. Okay. I literally can't even move. Okay. Dude, you need to take these cuffs off. This is completely unfair. I've literally done nothing wrong. Well, well, you're under arrest, so that's the I'm reason. I'm under arrest under what? A, for trespassing. What? For, I'm not trespassing. I'm waiting for a room. I'm waiting for a room, and I have a broken leg. I'm literally waiting for a room, and I have a broken leg. That is completely unfair. Okay, again, I didn't make that an arrest decision, okay? You wanna go down this, you, you, you wanna go no, down the ramp? No, no, I don't wanna go down those stairs. I wanna go okay. down the ramp. Oh my God, this is so painful. I can't walk. Okay, you, you wanna see here? I'm having such a hard time walking. Okay. That's fine. I'm trying we'll to pick up this here. leg and it's hurting. You are under arrest for trespassing after warning, okay? I'm not, I can't even stand up. Your officer literally ran away with my backpack and you think that he's, look, can you just help me out, please? 
I'm trying to leave. I, I am. Honestly, I, I don't want to stay here. Uh -huh. This is obviously like I'm paying so, for something here. And so are we going to stand here or are we going to be able to move? You need to like put your arm under my arm. Oh my god, no, no, no. I'm in so much pain. Can you please, please put me down? You put you down? Stop? You're not even walking. You're literally making you it more painful. Walk. You're literally making it more painful. Well, are you going to walk? Or I'm trying to walk and I can't. You well, you may just have to pick her up. <laughs> it's so pick bad. She's saying she's screaming. Yeah, she's saying she's hurting. So she can walk in here. She can walk out. She I can't out. walk out. My friend had carried me. My friend literally had her arm like hugged around my back. I can't walk like this. You want us to carry you? It hurts so bad. Okay, one just one leg. I one. can't move my other leg. That's not the hurt leg. I can't stand on this hurt leg. They're going to support you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it hurts so bad. Please stop holding my arms like that. Well, that's, you that, that's you said he wants to support you. Support. It hurts so bad. I just say, carry your thing. You want me to grab the legs? <laughs> that's what we're going to have to do. No, I don't want you to touch my leg. I don't want you to touch my leg. All right, so let's walk. Come on. Those are our you options. this far out here. I'm literally explaining it to you. Look, I'm, I've done literally nothing wrong. I can't even walk. <laughs> If she had initially agreed without being so rude, then there wouldn't be the need for an arrest. Now she's facing the prospect of jail, and she claims innocence. The officer, prompted by her constant screaming, resorted to using a luggage cart for her transportation from the hotel to the car. Quite a drama queen. Alright, oh you're gonna sit down, you're gonna put your leg up, we're gonna wheel you. Come on, you have to put some support there. I'm not standing on this leg. I'm not standing on the leg. No, it hurts so bad. Come on. It won't heal properly if you do that. I need to go sit back outside. Where else are you? Oh, 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 wait, wait. Don't let me down. Don't let me down yet. I got you. Oh, oh. <laughs> so what do you need? All right. What is wrong with you? What are you, what are you yelling for? Get off of me. Negative. I don't Please want don't you do touching that. me. Get off of me. Wrong. You're under arrest. Wrong. You're hurting right. my leg. You are hurting my broken leg. Okay. That hasn't healed yet. Get off of me. Get off of me. At this point, I don't even get off of me. You are not. Get off of me. Start grabbing at my hand. Get off of me. Get off of me. About to catch another charge. Get off of me. 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 Get off of Lift the leg up, cause I ain't got, I ain't got time careful, to do it. It's all day. Careful, careful, careful. Oh. Good. Look at that genius. Yeah. I'm trying to leave. Look, I've literally done nothing wrong. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she's gonna have to go in butt first. Okay. Dude, can you just drop me off somewhere? I look, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. She got to get up and go that way first. Uh, okay, do you wanna right. spin her around or Can I please or look, sir, around? I understand yeah. the warning. Make it less put your other leg up real quick. Okay. Look, sir, can I just can I just say something, please? Can I just say something? Been Officer, look, I understand the warning, and I, I do apologize. If you don't mind, I want to peacefully leave the premises without going no, to jail. No, I told you we're way Please. past that. All right, we're going to help you up, and you're going to put all your support on that leg, and we're going to help you up at the same time, okay? When you go in, go in butt first, all right? And then I'm going, or one of these officers will help pull you back as we help push you in, okay? Just now, she's realizing the consequences of her actions and offering an apology. However, the officer isn't buying it, considering all the drama and screaming that she's been doing. So it's pretty clear she's going to jail. You have to do something. All right, put your leg down. You work here. Put your leg down. No, your job is to get me a hotel room. This is illegal. I'm not paying for here. Put your leg down. All right, we're gonna help you up. Without going to jail. Ow, 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 ow. Alright, make sure you go in butt first. Yeah, one of y'all probably gonna come out there with me. Okay. Where's my backpack? He has it. It's in the car. Alright. Where's the backpack? The entire backpack. That way. 
I better not be missing anything from All right, that start bag. start scooting yourself back. I swear to God, I'm already suing for somebody breaking my leg. Okay. All right, push back with your good leg, and he's going to help facilitate you in. All right? I can't move that leg. You can't push for that one? The good one? All right, this leg is going to be straight. You're going to sit straight oh, back, wow. so this leg is, lay, is on the seat. I All can't right? even move. You got Dude, just let me just out. Push, push with your left foot. Push with your left foot. Oh my god, I can't push with yes, that left can. foot. God, there's, there's a brace on it. It's literally there's a I brace just, on no, it. No, no. You move it, it puts foot. pressure on the knee and it hurts Dude, really bad. This I don't way. know how else to explain that to you. You broke this my way. leg. You need, okay. Left one, good leg. Use the good leg to push yourself into the vehicle. Just slide towards me. Uh, you're pulling my arm. I know, I'm going to help you when you start pushing. Come on. You need to lift that leg or something instead because I can't lift it. And I don't want it to bump anything. Alright, you're gonna leave that leg straight as you sit back. I can't pull it. Because you're not using the leg. Look, I'm seriously okay. You just dropped me off like across the street. Like this is You give us a little bit more because the door's not closed. There you go. There we go. Good? Clear? She completely talked her way into this. I mean. Literally, 50 times, like, please, please, please. What's up? <laughs> wow. <laughs> right here. Well, the officers look pretty frustrated as they deal with this tough situation. You can see from their expressions, they're just determined to keep going despite the chaos. They want to make sure justice is served and teach a lesson to those who think they can get away with breaking the rules. All right. I'm going to sneak in here and help her up. And then we'll guide her that way. Ow, 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 wait, 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 this is as like far back as I can lean back. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is so the sea, baby. That hurts so much. Okay, now to one, one, All right, I was going to leave you by your ankle. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. 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 In the final outcome, Nicole ended up getting arrested for trespassing. Mohammed Bilal El Amin, wanted by the FBI on suspicion of murdering Jefford Tucker, was the focus of the officer's attention. While on patrol, the officer conducted random vehicle expiration checks and came across El Amin's vehicle. The check revealed that the registration had expired, prompting the traffic stop. So here, here's what's going to happen, Sakim, okay? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to place you in the custody today, okay? You're going to go down to jail. Oh, no. you got to get booked in. I'm going to take your fingerprints and picture, and you'll get a bond. But because you're driving on a suspended license, you got to go down to jail. Sir, I did not know. I have children. I have a sick uncle, and I run the household. I got you. No, I really we, do. We don't have a choice at this put, time. So please, please, arrest. Go ahead and turn around. Put your hands on your back, please. At this point, the cops were unaware that the driver they had stopped was Mohammed Bilal El Amin, who had been evading capture in pursuance of a murder warrant issued by the Atlanta Police Department. Also, he was doing all in his power to convince them to release him. No, I swear to you, I'll walk away from my car. So we're going to walk you back to this please, other car. Please, sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to walk you to my car. Oh, Come on. Sir, Come on. Thing, my aunt is old. She's 80 years old. Sir, please. Do you have anything I, on I you? I will not. I swear, you can please check me. Okay. Please check uh, everything on I'm you. I'm going to search you and send to arrest. Huh? See, this is emergency 911? Yes. 
face towards that. Okay. So Separate your feet out. Okay, Tell me a little bit. Yeah. Nothing in your pockets, right? Sir, sir please. What please. all do you need out of I your pocket? Sir, I have a child at the house that they cannot take care of. I what have... all do you need out of your car? Sir. The driver was informed by the cops that he was being arrested for the expired registration, for not having insurance, and for a suspended South Carolina driver's license that he had claimed was his. I'm, I don't have a choice here, man. I'm telling you. That's, I, that's I told you, job. I was not going to get in my car. We I swear to you, choice. I wasn't going to get in you my car. You have a suspended license. You're driving a car without insurance. You've got that taken care of. I've been of. doing it every you day. you got suspended registration. My so you have it's... to go down to the jail and get booked in. Just take your photograph. They're going to take your fingerprints. They'll give you a bond amount. You can bond out, and then you can get on the way up to the hospital. But you can't drive. Sir, I... So I, have a seat okay. for me, please. Okay, may I speak after you? Have a seat for me, please. Are you going to sit down, and then I'll listen to you. It was clear to the suspect that all was finished since he was unable to release himself from being imprisoned. Can you slide your legs in for us? You're not going to speak to me? No, unfortunately, I told you. I've already explained my position to you. Oh, this hurts. I don't have a choice. Sir, sir, I have, uh, sir. Okay, so the way you're sitting right now is not a good position. You're a tall guy. you got long legs. Can you slide your knees over this way and sit at an angle? Even though the driver begged the cops to just issue him tickets for the offenses and let him go, the cops informed him they were compelled by law to take him to jail. You can look. You can get in and get out, all right? I can get in and get out? Yeah, like they'll book you in. If you have somebody that can bond you out, you have a preset bond, so you can bond out of jail. You don't have to wait to see a judge. Well, how much is that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. They'll give it to you when we get there, okay? We'll work with you, all right? We'll try to get you out as quick as possible. This is, my uncle is sick. All right, well, we the quicker check. we get to jail, the quicker you can get out, okay? Sheriff James Hale of Oconee County stated that Muhammad Bilal El Amin's fingerprints yielded a match with a fugitive warrant issued by the Atlanta Police Department in 1994. This discovery led to El Amin's incarceration at the Oconee County Jail. In addition to the outstanding warrant, El Amin now faces charges of murder, felony murder, aggravated assault with a dangerous weapon, and possession of a handgun during the commission of a crime. This incident took place on November 23rd of 2016 in good old Georgia. A black Jeep was tearing down the road, and one of the passengers decided to shout, F the police, but you know, like with the whole thing. Little did they know, they were about to run into Officer James Sanders, a cop with a track record of trouble. Officer Sanders was on his usual patrol and that profanity didn't sit right with him. So he decided to give chase to the offending vehicle. The dash camera captured the whole pursuit and you can practically feel the tension in the air as Sanders pulls over the Jeep. What happens next is a real eye opener. How's it going? License insurance. That's why I got pulled over? Yeah, I'll be glad to tell you in just one second. Is everybody all right? What's up, Sanders? What's going on? Who yelled out the window? I don't know. None of us. Uh, yeah, come on back here with me, Mr. Bird. Yes, sir. Mr. Bird. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you one time. How long you had your license? Over six months. Over six months. So everybody, you're good to haul everybody around there, okay? Yes, yes sir. I'm going to ask you one time. Yes, sir. All right? And if you don't, we're going to go another route with it. Who yelled out of your Jeep when you went by us? It was Brandon. Who? Brandon. Which one's Brandon? In the front seat. Got the Jeep. Yes, sir. What'd you have to say? Nothing. No, tell me one more time you're going to jail, son. What's your name? Brandon Hughes. Brandon Hughes. Yes, sir. I know who you are. Yes, sir. Is there something you need to say to us that you want to yell out the window? No, sir. Who are you yelling at? Hey, look at me when you talk to me, son. Who are you going to yell at? What would you say? F the police. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Get your hands out of your pocket. Yes, Why you want to say that to the police? No, I ain't protecting you. F the police. Why? You can get back. Why do you want to F the police, son? I don't. Why do you say it then? You think it's going to make you a badass or something no, in front sir, of everybody? No, sir, I don't, because I'm getting fussed out right now. You want to the police? No, sir, well, here I, I am, right I here, brother. I don't want to. Why not? You're a tough guy. Come on. I'm not tough. Huh? I'm not tough. You seem like a little baby the day you was in court, remember? Yes, sir. I'm giving you every opportunity. 
No, sir. Then why you want to yell about it when you're in front of your buddies right there? Is it cool? No, sir. You, you trying to be a badass in front of them? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. I'm giving you every opportunity yes, to f me up. You understand? Yes, sir. Sanders, fueled by rage, confronts the teenagers. The body cam footage reveals a disturbing scene as he taunts and threatens them. The driver, a 17-year-old, is pulled out of the car and the interrogation begins. The situation escalates as Sanders, with a history of threats, makes it clear that he's ready for a fight. Now let me ask you this, what have I ever done to you? Nothing at all. Not a damn thing. Yes, what has my partner ever done to you? Not a thing. Not a damn thing, right? Yes, sir. So why do you want to the police? I don't. I was being dumb. Now it's a little bit more than being stupid is what I think. So do you, let me ask you something. Next time you get caught selling weed or having weed on you, do you think somebody's going to try to cut you a break? If I go to goddamn jerk and everybody out that damn Jeep and I find one ounce of damn weed, do you think I'm going to take everybody to jail? Yes, sir. No, hell, I'm going to take every one of your damn friends to jail. Yes, sir. How old are you? Six, seventeen. I didn't know y'all could be so goddamn stupid anymore. Everybody get out of the Jeep. Yes, sir. You want to see how big of a damn po police is going to be. I'm fixing to show you. I'm fixing to search every damn one of you and every damn ounce of this Jeep. Now, so help me God, if I find one damn seed, every damn one of you is going to go to jail because of the police, son. Yes, sir. Up here at Checker. It's funny, ain't it? No, sir. Did y'all laugh? No, sir. Huh? Did you laugh? No, Did you laugh? Are you think it's funny? Yeah, radio, show me 1038. Charlie Echo Yankee 6704, CEY 6704, be North Cherokee at Checkers. This smart ass right here says oh, police. Yeah, I'm sorry, I ain't. Oh, yeah? yeah. Bird, you can get back in the damn Jeep, son. You ain't done nothing wrong. Y'all two pile back in there. Y'all ain't done nothing wrong. I, I, he don't believe it, but I swear to God I can beat him in basketball. Dude, let me tell you something. I got two damn tore lig torn up ligaments. I will smoke both of y'all. Y'all can play two on one. Let me tell you something. You'd be so, you'd be so damn fi You'd be on your little skinny ass. I'm telling you. You ever seen Charles Barkley play? Why, dude? You know who this is? What's your stepdaddy's name? Brian Massey's stepson. What? Yeah. Police. Hey, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. Technically, I can't, see, I can't search your damn Jeep, and I can't touch y'all, and I don't want to. I'm not a like that. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you something. If you hang around like this, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna mess with you. Okay, I suggest y'all going somewhere. Y'all jet. Where y'all going to eat? Make his ass walk. We have to put up a lot of as it is. Yes, sir. I mean, there's cops getting stopped, getting killed on traffic stops and stuff like that, and then you ride by and you holler that. And we out here to save your butt. Yes, sir. The teens were searched. The apparent lack of justification for the search raises concerns about potential violations of the teen's rights. Simultaneously, the arrival of another officer who acknowledges the baseless nature of the traffic stop highlights the importance of internal accountability within law enforcement. What if that was a DUI person I just stopped on the side of the road and got them off the street keep them hitting somebody in your family and killing them? Yes, sir. You gotta, you gotta look at it, you know what I'm saying? It all goes around. I mean, why do you really feel like that? Because you really feel like that. I mean, what, I would be okay if you just trying to be a badass in front of your boys. Because you obviously have some pent-up frustrations. And I'm going to tell you right now, neither one of us done anything to you. Yes, sir, I know. So tell, so tell, uh, be honest. Be honest about it. Why in the world do you really feel that way? Because deep down, you, you have to feel it. Because that, 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 you know what? I've been, I've been, I've done some crazy stuff in my life. Not once have I ever said that. Have you ever had a bad run-in with the police or anything? Yeah, bud. Can I pull into some gas real quick? Yeah, man, go ahead. Please and you buy into that yeah, crap? Paint your own picture, dude. I mean, we ain't never done anything to you. I don't consider myself one of them. I mean, if you, if you was in a car accident, whatever, I'd do my best to try to save your life. Yes, sir. And that includes putting ourselves in danger doing it. Once the footage was thoroughly examined, Social Circle Police Chief Tyrone Oliver concluded that Officer Sanders had breached department policies. Consequently, Sanders, who had served for eight years on the force, was let go from his position. Overzealous cops are one thing, but there's nothing most people hate more than a cop who tries to bootlick the authorities and make corrupt decisions to help the powerful get away with their crimes. The next cop got busted for just that. Let's go back to December 2019 in Bristol, Tennessee. 
Local police officer Phil Kiersnowski pulled over a young woman named Sam Lundberg for what appeared to be a minor infraction, her window tint. You might be wondering, what's the fuss about a window tint violation? Well, that's what the cop thought too, and he was ready to help this powerful young lady get off the hook. Oh, you know how dark your window tint is? Oh, Officer McDaniel checked it last week. I swear to you, he pulled me over for it. You can check it, though. But yeah, he pulled me I, over last it's week for it. dark as hell. Yeah, he pulled me over last week for it. But he checked it and said it was fine. I don't think it is. Sam found herself under the scrutinizing gaze of Officer Kurznowski. Little did she know, this encounter would ignite a series of events that would hit the foundations of the Bristol Police Department. Watch as Officer Kiersnowski found himself caught between duty and a department policy that had pushed him to the edge. I swear, he pulled me over right in front of my house, on King, like near King College. 497 and 462. Hold on one second. Okay. Got another officer's got a little meter that he can put on it. You close to Weaver Pike and Southside. 10 4, please. It's dark as hell. But, uh, it's so but yeah, I, Mc, Officer I McDaniel um, checked it last week, like literally in front of my house. He pulled me over because, no, he checked, pulled me over in October because my tags were expired. Mm -hmm. And um, he checked it then. Okay. You don't have like a medical exemption or anything like that, do you? No. Okay. Well, why, why is it so dark? <laughs> Other than it looks good. I don't know. I mean, I, it's, just, it's been like this for a year and a half. Well, I've right. been pulled over for it twice, but they've checked it both times. McDaniel pulled me over twice for it, and he's checked it both times. Do you use one of the cards like this, or do you have a meter? Use the card. All right. Carter's on his way here. He's got a meter. We can check it. Officer Kiersnowski, equipped with his body camera, not only handed Sam a ticket for her window tint, but also took the opportunity to express his discontent with the police department's strict window tinting enforcement. In a twist of events, he even suggested Sam could get her father involved. Let's continue. I'm going to give you a citation. However, that's just because the admin's on <laughs> over window tint. One phone call from your dad would probably get rid of it and save all of us a lot of, a lot of, a lot of heartache. The chief and the captain are real heavy on window tent right now. We don't know why. I just... Huh. So, you know. We all said if we found you driving, we're going to write your tent. You all said that? Well, well, we all know your window tent's real dark. And I don't believe that's... that's but yeah. Um, so you you all are targeting me? No. You just no, said it? No. No, I didn't. Um, just, like I said, one call from your dad would probably make all this go away. You got your license on you? Yeah, I do. Here you can see two former classmates are acting more relaxed than you'd expect during a regular traffic stop. The reason behind this is their past connection, and it becomes even more interesting when you realize that Sam is the daughter of Senator John Lundberg, who has an important role in local politics. So what happens next? Well, the officer, Kiersnowski, decides to cover his microphone, making it private, and then suggests, why not get your dad involved? It seems Officer Kiersnowski probably is annoyed with the strict rules, and he sees a chance to make things easier by bringing in someone with more authority. It's like he's hoping Senator Lumberg can help out. Now, that's where the story gets even more interesting. Your window tent meter. Mm-hmm. Y'all trying to get it shut down, aren't you? Yep, need the window tent meter. How's this thing work? You just stick it on. Just stick it on there. All right. She says Mac pulled her over the other day and said it was good. It looks real dark to me. What if I don't want him to check my window tent? I don't like you. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why don't you like Carter? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you can roll this one up just a little bit. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> or that one. He might get his chin stuck in it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This one. Oh, that one. Off. 
What's 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 the legal on this meter? What's the legal limit on the meter? It's supposed to be 35. I usually do 30. What is it? 12. Well, <laughs> I, I think when Max stopped you, Max blind. <laughs> Dang. So, sit tight for me, okay? All right. All right. Another officer came with a meter to check if the car windows were too dark. While checking, the officer also said he doesn't really like doing this stuff. He explained that even though he personally doesn't agree, he has to follow the rules from the court. It was kind of unusual to hear the officer speaking his mind about how he felt, especially with the job that he had to do. Watch this. All right. There's your idea back. Except, I hate doing this, but our admin's on us real heavy for window tint. A lot of us don't agree with it, but... My mom got a ticket today, too. <laughs> where, where? I was giving her so much shit for it, and now I'm like... Uh, Graham? Oh, well, Josh is <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, don't tell people that. <laughs> now, uh, court date set for February 26th at 8 a.m. Uh, you do have the option of having it taken off and get legal limit, and the judge will treat it as a warning and he'll dismiss it. I'm not even going to be in town that day. There's a number on the back there you can call and have it rescheduled. Okay. Or you can just pay the ticket and leave the window tinted as it is. However, it won't stop other people from stopping you. Okay. All right. All right. You just sign there. Not admission guilt. Just saying you receive a citation. You'll get taken care of. But you'll appear in court. All right. Any questions for me? No. All right. The police officer found himself without a job after he pulled over Senator John Lundberg's daughter for a window tint violation. During the stop, Phil Kiersnowski covered his microphone and suggested to Sam Lundberg she should get her dad to call the police chief, trying to put a stop to the department's rigorous window tent enforcement. Kiersnowski got the boot for airing his thoughts on camera regarding a contentious department policy and Senator John Lundberg. In the serene town of Lorain, Ohio, a seemingly ordinary traffic stop turned into family drama on an April day in 2018. What Officer John Kovac couldn't foresee was that this incident would set in motion the unraveling of his 20-year tenure with the Lorraine Police Department. The whole saga began with a father's disapproval of his daughter's choice of partner. Get out. What? I my car. Any guns, knives, weed on you? What's that? Uh, Meet John Kovac. A cop with a mission, determined to separate his daughter, Caitlin, from the man he deemed unsuitable, Mackay Coleman. But as we'll soon find out, this wasn't just about a disapproving father. Why is her computer there? I just come home and making dinner. My kids went to Walmart. Where would your daughter be in my house? I don't know. You know, so if I check and you're lying to me, you're going to jail. You could check and I'm not lying to you. So if I'm not lying, I don't know why you're accusing me. Well, I was told she was here. So if I check, I know you. And I, well, that boy's been harboring her. Okay, I heard she was suicidal. She's getting a ticket because she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. So that's going to cost you your daughter. So that's going to cost. Okay, that's fine. I will. Kovac thought Coleman wasn't right for his daughter because of family problems. Things got worse when Caitlin, his daughter, stayed with her boyfriend even though her parents didn't want her to. Kovac became deeply concerned when he suspected his daughter might be contemplating self-harm. While it's natural for a parent to worry, it becomes problematic when personal concerns start influencing professional behavior. The distinction between his role as a father and his responsibilities as a police officer became blurred, and that's what led Kovac to this point, the consequences he would face later. Get in my car. Get in my car. Goodbye. What? Goodbye. You. Goodbye. Get in my car. You can't. You can't take me. I am 18. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Hey, you can get back in the car. You're in the no, you're not. Get in my car. Why are you taking me? Get in my car. Why are you taking me? You, you have to give me a reason. By law, you had, why are you pushing me? Why are you? Why are you pushing me? Why are you doing this? Stop. Get in the car. Why are you putting her in the car? She was suicidal yesterday. Was I was not! You, was you weren't even with me yesterday! Just like, well. Sadly, he opted for a path of threats and intimidation. He was clearly putting his personal interests ahead of his obligation to enforce the law. Police Chief Cell Rivera did not mince words when he labeled Kovac's behavior as an abuse of police authority and a serious departure from appropriate protocol. Kovac's employment was promptly terminated on May 11th, but he's opted to file an appeal, backed by the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge No. 3.